What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Broly, the Scion of Legend, Part 6. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. So what now? Are we going back again? Taro asked Broly as they flew away. No, I still need to gather some things and besides we still have to give our present to someone, who will appear today as well. Yeah right, I first thought you wanted to give it to Goku or Vegeta. So, it's not someone from their group? Taro questioned. Yes, don't think about it, you will meet him soon. If I am not wrong, we can feel his key in just a few hours. Until then I wanted to get a present for our scientists. The trio quickly flew into a city not bothering at all with all the attention they got by flying midday over the busy traffic. They quickly headed towards a building Broly had visited a few years ago. They just walked into the building with the words Capsule Corporation on it. This big house seemed pretty empty. With the exception of an old man and a seemingly young woman, the house was only filled with animals. Broly quickly went into their storage room until he found a box with capsules inside. They just ignored the questions they got from Dr. Brief since he didn't make any attempt to stop them. His wife, Panchi, who seemed flustered by the sudden guests, wanted to quickly prepare some cake and tea for them. Before she was done, they had already disappeared and headed to God's temple. Its location was slightly hidden by magic, but for Broly, it was too easy to find it. They quickly arrived at Corin's tower and flew upwards along it. After a short moment, they landed on the lookout. Broly, for the first time, looked at the familiar sight of the lookout. It didn't take long before two people came outside the temple to greet them. Of course, these two were Kami and Popo. Kami was gripping his staff tightly as he looked at the unexpected visit. He of course knew of Broly who had easily beaten up Goku. The other Z fighters had noticed the fluctuation from their fight as well, but as they had some androids to take care of, they didn't bother with it. What do you want, Broly? Kami raised his voice hostily. Calm down, buddy. Just want to enjoy the show. I heard you had a problem with androids and I thought I'd check it out. Broly said in a friendly tone but this only made Kami more apprehensive. Not long ago he had heard from King Kai of Broly's actions in the Andromeda Galaxy and he knew that it was still not time to confront Broly. What made him relieved was the fact that Broly seemingly wants to uphold his promise about only coming to take action in seven years from now. If there was enough time, Kami was confident that the Z fighters, especially Goku, would be able to defeat Broly. What he couldn't understand was the fact that Broly wanted to witness their fights. In Broly's eyes it should only be a quarrel of kids, right? After all, his strength was more than enough to crush them beneath his feet. He doubted that Broly would want information about their strength. He knew that Scions were extremely arrogant. He wouldn't consider studying their capabilities, right? The trio ignored the two and walked past them inside the temple. They quickly arrived at their food storage as if they were able to smell it the whole time. They weren't polite as they just stole the raw food and prepared their dinner. While Broly and his friends were enjoying their food, the Z fighters slowly woke up. Because there wasn't Krillin present to feed them a senzu bean, it actually took them a while before one of them could move again and feed the others with a senzu bean. Vegeta had quickly flown off after waking up, while Piccolo came to a decision and quickly headed towards Kami's lookout. It wasn't long until he had reached the lookout. He didn't need to wait as Kami was already prepared. He knew why Piccolo had come here. Piccolo wanted to fuse with him and bring back the past Super Namekian. He would have hesitated and found some reasons not to fuse, but after seeing how casually Broly came in, beaten up not only Goku but the androids as well, he knew that only by fusing, their chances of success would rise. Piccolo was surprised that Kami didn't argue but almost urged him. Piccolo made it clear that they had to use his body as the base, and Kami without hesitation gave his acknowledgement. Piccolo put his palm on Kami's chest, who then started screaming as his key and life force flared up. With a bright light, Kami disappeared as he fused with Piccolo. The light that came out of Piccolo's body had disappeared as fast as it appeared. Piccolo slowly stood up and felt his body before turning his head to the temple's entrance. Broly stood there with a roasted meat drumstick. Broly observed Piccolo with a smile. 
He casually bit a piece of meat off before turning around, walking inside the temple again. Piccolo gulped. He could feel how his strength had risen exponentially, but he couldn't help but seriously doubt that he would be a match against Broly. In fact, after he became stronger, he was more aware of the gap that existed between the two. He didn't bother with it anymore and walked to the edge. He turned around and waved goodbye at the crying Popo, before jumping off the edge. With a flash his key enveloped him, and he headed off, but his goal was not the androids but something else. While Broly was there, Kami had looked down at the earth, looking at the actions of the androids, but in the end something else had taken his notice. Something had killed many humans in a slightly bigger city. Since Kami had now fused with Piccolo, he knew of this creature that had put Kami at unease for the last four years. Kami had speculated that this being should be more powerful than even the androids. While Piccolo headed towards this being, Broly and his crew finally walked out of the temple. Thanks for the meal, Broly said to Popo, stunning him for a second, before the trio disappeared as they teleported away. Kilometers away, they appeared in a giant city, which echoed with agonizing screams. Broly looked around indifferently before he focused at one direction, seemingly seeing through walls. Broly smiled before he dashed into that direction. He didn't bother to jump or go around the houses, but just ran through them as if the buildings didn't exist at all. The source of the screams came closer and finally stopped. Cell had now finished his last meal in the city and wanted to head off to another city, but he felt a presence quickly approach him. He suppressed his key before hiding in the shadows of the debris of a skyscraper. He noticed that the wall he was leaning against was shaking and quickly realized what was happening. He tried to move away from the wall, but it was already too late. The wall burst into thousands of pieces as a large guy charged through it. While shouting, here's Broly. With a ferocious smile, Broly grabbed the shocked Cell by the head. Without giving Cell time to react, Broly forced his head into the ground with the momentum he had gathered. A deep trench was formed with Cell's face. Just after they stopped sliding across the ground, Broly gave him another kick, sending him through multiple buildings. After a short while of recovering, Cell jumped out of the debris as he knew that Broly seemed to know his position, even if he suppressed his key. Cell looked at Broly's figure who looked at him leisurely. Cell considered his options to either stand his ground and attack him or flee until he had absorbed the androids. He knew that right now, he wouldn't necessarily be a match for the person in front of him. He didn't want to die after finally coming to the past, waiting for four years only to be killed just as he was about to get stronger and become a perfect being. But his option of fleeing was quickly denied as another two appeared around him. He only now noticed that they had tails and immediately recognized them as Scions. He was confused as there shouldn't be any other Scions except for Goku, Vegeta, Gohan and Trunks. He hesitated for a moment before landing. From what he knew about Scions, he may be able to trick them using their huge egos. Before he could say anything one of the Scions threw something at him. He caught it easily but was still looking warily at the Scions around him. They didn't seem to make a move anytime soon but instead waited for him. He couldn't help but look at what he had caught. His eyes widened as he sensed the immense energy inside the strange fruit he had just caught. He looked suspiciously at the three Scions. Don't be a scaredy cat. We just want you to get stronger. Otherwise it would be boring. Broly smiled, but Cell couldn't help but feel that he was hiding something. He comes out of nowhere and gave him this kind of treasure. It would be foolish of him not to suspect something. But he knew very well that he doesn't really have a choice now, does he? Cell looked at the other two Scions. One didn't show any emotions and the other had his arms crossed. While tapping on one with his finger, it was clear that that one was impatient. Instead of making a fuss, he just bit the bullet, in this case the fruit. As soon as he bit into it, he felt immense energy flowing into him. They were nourishing his body and he could feel his strength instantly increase. These thousands of humans, he just absorbed were nothing compared to this single fruit. He even felt that he had enough energy to attain the next step of his path to become a perfect being, but he had to be patient. He needed the androids to evolve to get the best results. Theoretically, with enough energy he could do it without them, but he had no prior information on the next evolution. If he made a mistake, his foundation would be flawed, but with the androids the process would almost be automatically. As he felt the energy, he had dropped his guard for a second. In just that instant Broly seemed to have teleported right in front of him. Broly pointed his fingers at Cell's head. Before he could react, his mind went blank as something seemed to drill into his head. His body shook for a moment before Cell stabilized himself. He quickly recovered and slapped Broly's hand away as he jumped backwards. 
Broly only grinned but didn't follow up with anything. He then turned to Aze. Aze have some fun with him. Aze didn't say anything unnecessary as he directly dashed to Cell, who was surprised by the sudden turn of events. Nevertheless, after Broly's attempt to attack him, he wouldn't be caught off guard again. He directly engaged Aze and overpowered him quickly until Aze turned Super Scion. Cell stood no chance against Aze now and was quickly dominated by him. He was being pushed through the whole city. He was like a baby in front of an adult. He stood no chance, but no matter what he wouldn't just bent his knee. Broly yawned as he looked at the fight. He already sensed Piccolo's key swiftly approaching. After a round of pushing Cell around, Piccolo had finally arrived. Broly called Aze back and slowly rose into the sky. Piccolo frowned as he looked at the three scions and the miserable figure, which gave off a familiar key signature. We have warmed him up for you. No reason to thank us, Piccolo. It was our pleasure. Broly said cheekily before heading off with his crew in tow. What now? Taro asked he was beginning to feel bored. The fighters here weren't bad but still far from being his or A's match. We are gonna keep Goku busy until Cell absorbed the androids. Oh, so that is that bug's name. Why do you want him to absorb the androids? Well, he needs the androids to evolve to his final form. His strength will increase significantly. He will not be as strong as you guys but still nothing to scoff about. If he and the others can't even keep up with us, why did we even come along if there is no one for us to fight? Hee <laughs> hee, they will be strong enough for you if you motivate them correctly, you will see. Whatever you say, you are the boss, but can't you just make Cell motivated? You already have him under your control, haven't you? Taro inquired. Broly glanced at him for a second, giving Taro a fright. He had already told them to not speak about it so causally if they aren't in a secure room. Broly created a key barrier around the three, which obstructed the sound. The light of the barrier started to brighten, preventing someone from lip-reading. If that motivation comes from their deepest desire, they become stronger exponentially. I could make him, but he would be inferior if that desire had come from himself. I only give him some pushes here and there, but I can't directly make him, that's a no-go. Furthermore, I already messed up with Cooler, can't make the same mistake now. Cell is too valuable. Cooler had improved considerably, but he was far from becoming golden cooler. It was possible that he just wasn't as talented as Frisia, but Broly could tell that he didn't give 100% in improving, something was obstructing his progress. After Broly had experimented with some elves, he noticed the difference in their progress, if he commanded them to train or make it a necessity for them to train. He is? He isn't that strong even if he had his final form, if he is not even as strong as we are as you say. Why don't you just go to the top ranks of the universe and control them, do you think it is easy to control a soul without them noticing? Even if I become vastly stronger than them, most of them have years of experience and many would have trained their mental energy, which directly connects with their soul. They would notice something different immediately, but Cell on the other hand is just a newcomer. He has yet to notice his soul. He wouldn't see anything wrong, even if his soul was in shambles. That is why I did it now, with his potential. He will soon be one of the strongest fighters in the universe. He is going to become one of the strongest? Don't let his look deceive you. His body contains the DNA from Frost Demons, Scions, and Namekians. His body is a collection of three races with immeasurable potential. Alright, so we just need to help Cell absorb the androids. We don't have to help him, he will do it himself. He already ate a fruit of might. He will hunt down the androids now. But he isn't strong enough to defeat Goku. For now, we keep Goku from killing Cell until Cell reaches his final form. Understood. All right, Aze and Taro answered. In the next moment, Broly undid the barrier and sensed for Goku's key. He squinted his eyes as he noticed that Goku had suppressed it. The others seemed to have vanished as well. Even Cell was gone. Broly thought that since Cell had enough energy, he would go out to hunt the androids now, but instead they all hid. Broly grinned that they thought that they could escape his senses. The next moment his vision changed, revealing all energy types to him. He sensed the most prominent life force and immediately recognized that they had gathered at the lookout. The three didn't attempt to hide their presence as they directly headed towards the lookout. Without obstruction, they arrived above the lookout. They looked down at the Z fighters who returned their gaze. Krillin was gulping and the others were uneasy as well. Broly couldn't find Vegeta or Trunks, which meant that they probably already went inside the hyperbolic time chamber. Goku, Raditz and Jain were there as well. Broly wondered why Goku was here since he had more than enough power to kill not only the androids but the current cell as well. Instead of wasting time here, 
Shouldn't he be on the lookout for them? Well, better for him, now he doesn't have to follow Goku around. Piccolo, on the other hand, wasn't here. Was he killed by Cell? Broly quickly dismissed that idea. They were currently on the same level. If he wasn't careless, he shouldn't have died against Cell. Broly slowly opened his mouth and started speaking. Listen up, you worms. I had given you ten years in hope you will drastically improve, but you weaklings barely made any progress after three years. Since I am generous, I give you another two weeks. I will create an arena where you will fight against my followers. If you can beat one of them, I will only take action in seven years as promised. If you fail, you can all die with this planet. Now sent your elites to fight them, until then no one will leave this planet. Broly's voice echoed in the sky. He made sure to amplify his voice, so it would reach every creature on this planet. He wanted to make sure, Cell had heard it too, no matter where he was. After delivering his message, he, Taro and Aze seemingly headed off again. Unbeknownst to the Z Fighters, they still hovered in the air without a care in the world. They were hovering and even brought out some food they had stolen from the temple, completely in plain sight, but no one seemed to notice them. Broly, Taro and Aze were eating leisurely midair, while the Z Fighters were tense and contemplating if they could win against Broly's followers. Goku was confident that they could win which eased up the atmosphere but the words from Jain quickly dampened the mood again. She told them that they have already ascended the Super Saiyan transformation for many years and it would be difficult for them to win. What made them hope was the fact that Goku wasn't far from the second level. With the hyperbolic time chamber their chances would be even better. Although the humans of the group didn't expect to make great changes, they still resolved themselves to train. Since they all only had two chances to go inside, they had enough time for everyone to train, if they divided themselves into groups. While they were eating, Aze suddenly spoke out. Broly, where are we going to build the arena? Oh yeah, wait for a second, I am going off and build one. Won't be long until I come back. Without waiting for a response, Broly headed off into the distance. Aze and Taro looked at each other before grasping their food and then followed Broly. Broly noticed that and came to a stop before he turned around and questioned them. We don't know how to use magic to hide ourselves. If they look into the sky, we would be immediately exposed, right? Never mind then, just follow me. The two followed Broly and directly flew to a remote wasteland, far away from the cities. While they were off to build an arena, a new figure appeared on the lookout. Piccolo had finally appeared on the lookout. He looked at the Z fighters before questioning them of Trunks' whereabouts. Goku came forwards and told him that they were inside the hyperbolic time chamber to train. I see. Then we will wait until Trunks comes out. Why do you want to see him? Krillin asked. There is another entity from the future named Cell, whose purpose for coming here is to absorb the androids 17 and 18. He needs them to evolve and we are going to help him. Why do we help him? Is he a good guy? Krillin asked doubtfully. No. He is another creation from Dr. Jero. He is stronger and probably even more evil than the androids we have encountered. But we need every help to beat the followers from Broly. We will also have to convince the androids to help us. That seems plausible. But why do we need trunks? Goku asked while scratching his head. Since our androids are stronger, we will go to the future and take the androids from Trunks' timeline back here for Cell to absorb. I already told Cell to wait on an island a few thousand kilometers away. I see. So, we gather the best we can, train in the hyperbolic time chamber and defeat Broly's followers. Afterwards, what are we going to do with Cell and the androids? Tien summarized while already pondering on what to do when they succeed. After all, the androids and Cell in their eyes are still evil. Don't worry. If they think about messing around, I am going to beat them up, Goku said while slapping on his upper arm. With Goku around the atmosphere was considerably loosened up. In the meantime, on barren land far off from civilization, two figures were arguing with each other about what to do, while another tall guy with an orange mohawk was sitting on the ground. 17, we need to fight too. 18 was shouting at 17 who was leaning against a boulder. 18, that's not our problem. Let Goku and his crew fight that monster. 17 stubbornly rejected her. You know they don't stand a chance against him. He will destroy the whole planet and I don't have to tell you what happens to us if we don't have a freaking planet to live on. 16 help me out. 16 was smiling at a bird on his hand, but as soon as 18 shouted towards him, it was scared away. My only mission is to kill Goku. See, how about we take a spaceship from somewhere and leave this PL dash? I suggest searching at his home. We have no other indications for his location. 16 finished his reply and stood up before continuing. 
I can't let someone else kill Goku. I knew I could count on you. Seventeen, don't be stupid and help us. I, this is suicide. Why bother with this planet? Ladash, you think we can leave? You heard what he said. It will be his followers that fight in two weeks, not himself. If we try to leave, he will take actions himself. This is our best chance. Seventeen thought about how easily they were pummeled by Broly. He gritted his teeth before throwing his arms into the air. Fine. I am in. Eighteen smiled happily hearing this. We need to head to these coordinates. 58 N018. 439. East District. Sixteen told them about the Goku's address. All right, let's go. Without further ado, they flew to Goku's home. Broly and his crew had, after searching for a while, found a vast wasteland, perfect for them and the Z-Fighters to go all out. With a hand wave, the small hills and boulders were flattened. A huge perfect area was being created in an instant. He first thought about using a mountain like Cell did in the series, but he thought it would be better to use stronger materials to do this. He hadn't done it often as he mostly used magic to create clothes or to enhance his attacks. He closed his eyes and concentrated before a white block appeared in front of him, which he directly placed on the cleared area. Afterwards, he created more of these Katie blocks and placed them to create a simple arena. Katie was a durable steel that Exausia had once came across upon. It was not as durable as Kachin, but it certainly was better than most materials one could find in the universe. Exausia, after finding it, had used it to enhance the durability of its city. Broly used it, since it wouldn't cost him as much magic power as it would with Kachin. It didn't take long for the arena to finish, and was practically a rebuild of Cell's arena only more durable. It would be hard to annihilate it, even if Vegeta used his final flash in his Super Saiyan second grade. While giving the arena the final touch by giving it those spiky corners, he noticed three figures a few hundred kilometers away. Broly grinned as he recognized the androids. He suddenly disappeared from the spot. Taro and A's looked up from their meals, only to see no one around. They shrugged before continuing to eat. Apparently Earth's food really did it to them. They had even asked Broly where they could find more. They were determined to go to a city to gather a lot and bring it back to Exausia. Broly seemingly materialized in front of the androids, completely frightening the three. Hello there. Where are you three heading to? After hearing that Sixteen stepped in front of the other two, he was looking tense as he observed at the smiling Broly. We are heading to Goku's house to ally with them against you. Seventeen and Eighteen were shocked that Sixteen simply revealed their plan. Sixteen, what are you dash? I see. The direct approach, good choice. You won't find him at his home. They are currently at Kami's lookout, training in the hyperbolic time chamber. I have no data of that place. No problem. Broly pointed a finger at Sixteen's head, and a beam of golden light directly pierced Sixteen's head. You! Seventeen was about to take action before he was stopped by Sixteen. Thank you, we will take off now. Sixteen said before flying away with Seventeen under his arms. Eighteen was dumbfounded but didn't waste time and quickly followed the other two. Broly was waving behind them as if he was seeing off a friend. After they couldn't be seen anymore, he stopped before a ferocious grin appeared on his face. So, they want to cooperate with them too. Now my expectations are increasing even more. Don't disappoint me. He went back to his arena before his voice echoed through the whole world, letting everyone know of its location. Taro fried a big meat drumstick with his key and was just about to bite into it, but before he could, it was snatched out of his hands. He was about to complain but saw how Broly already began to eat. That, that was mine. Taro mumbled. Did you say something? Broly growled while eating. Nope. Broly, won't we go back to the lookout? Aze asked. He was sitting on the ground, leaning against a small boulder. He looked in the direction the androids just flew to. No, it doesn't matter anymore. I didn't think that they would cooperate with each other, especially Cell, but it seems our appearance made a greater impact than I initially thought. You can go explore this planet or train whatever you want, but you will be here in 13 days, otherwise there will be consequences. Broly shot a glance at Taro who had his mouth full of food. He forcibly gulped it down at once. Of course, you can count on me. Broly only sighed, before he looked back at A's. Make sure he is here. Understood. Broly nodded at the response. He then flew to the middle of the arena. He sat down cross-legged and started meditating. His body slowly raised itself into the air. While he was levitating, electricity started appearing all over his body. He circulated his energy, refining his control and generating more ki. He didn't only increase his ki, in the meantime, 
he used image training to further his control of his other energies. But this wasn't enough to occupy him. With the increasing strength of his mental energy, he was able to multitask on more things without getting mentally exhausted. Because of that, he used the time to train his senses. As of now, he always had to actively use his vision of truth if he wanted to see something well hidden. He wanted that the periphery was constantly, consciously or unconsciously completely revealed to him. So, he expanded his senses across the ground. It grew rapidly, covering more and more ground. Surprisingly, his senses didn't seem to have a limit to expand if he used more focus on it. Because he was currently cultivating his other energies, he didn't think the area he covered would grow this tremendously. In a span of a few days, his senses covered the whole planet's surface, which was currently his limit, but he could feel that with more time he would get better in distinguishing the different signals he was receiving. He was able to see every living creature, rocks, plants, oceans, even air itself was perceived by him. He saw how Taro had robbed yet another restaurant, while Aze was looking at some weapons in a shop nearby. Cell was meditating on an island while waiting for the Z-Fighters. He saw Chi-Chi with a worried face, Bulma working on some device and Rashi reading dirty magazines. Thieves, gangs, scientists, politicians, athletes, martial artists. Many Earthlings had dismissed his message, seemingly thinking it was only a bad prank. But the authorities had taken it more seriously because of the city Cell had destroyed. They began to mobilize their army. Hercule Satan was being informed to take actions as well. All the information was almost overloading his brain as it was practically bombarding him. Every normal person would have already turned into a retard. Even the Z-Fighters who had trained their mental energy through image training would not be able to handle it. Ambition took over and he wanted to go even further beyond. He wanted to know how far he could go with this. He stopped circulating his energies and wholly focused on expanding his senses. His body had already landed on the ground because all his energies were dormant. He was so focused on expanding that the time seems to shoot past him. He didn't even notice how his former rich but also crude mental energy was being refined with every second. He wanted to go further, the surface wasn't enough anymore. He wanted to expand it not only into the ground but into the sky as well, until nothing could enter or leave the atmosphere of this planet without him noticing. In the meantime, the androids arrived on the lookout. The Z-Fighters observed them calmly, the human fighters were still a little bit tense. But the now Super Namekian, Piccolo and Goku had given them more than enough confidence to engage them if needed. Piccolo and Goku were scrutinizing them, while the androids did the same, especially Sixteen, who focused intently on Goku. Eighteen stabbed his sides with her elbow. Afterwards, okay? Sixteen looked at her. He closed his eyes contemplating about something. In the end, he did not take any actions, which surprised Seventeen and Eighteen. Although they had asked him not to take action, he was after all different than they were. He was, unlike them, a real android. They were humans with enhancement cyborgs, they could ignore the instructions given to them, but Sixteen wasn't supposed to be capable of that. I know what to do, otherwise the whole planet and all its inhabitants will die. This was his answer. Was his desire to protect nature able to overshadow his program, or was something else the cause? So, what are you here for? Piccolo asked as he approached them with crossed arms. We want to help against the followers of this Broly guy. Seventeen stepped forwards. Fine. Now we don't have to search for you. In the next two weeks we will train and make a plan on how to beat them. Train? How will training for two weeks help? Seventeen asked doubtfully. Before we answer that, can you even improve through training? Piccolo observed them of any possible lies. Yes, we aren't robots. We are humans with some enhancement, so of course we can get stronger if we wanted to. If that is the case, we have a room called Hyperbolic Time Chamber where one year inside equals one day outside. The androids were shocked by this revelation. Why are you telling them? What if they are still planning to kill us? Yamcha shouted out but was quickly quieted by Piccolo's glare. They will go inside the room as well. We need them to be even stronger than they are now. Don't worry. They aren't the only ones who can improve. Piccolo showed a confident smile. Yeah, no worries. After I achieve the new form, I can beat them up with one arm. Goku added with a grin. You know we are right here. 18 mumbled. Either way, we have to wait for Vegeta and Trunks to come out. Then we initiate our plan with Cell. Cell? Who is that? Another one of Dr. Jero's invention. Piccolo explained everything about Cell and Cell's intention to absorb them. You are not planning on handing us over to that monster, are you? 17 took on a stance, ready to engage at any moment. Hey, we are the good guys. 
Yamcha shouted out. Seventeen side glanced at him but focused back on Piccolo. Evidently Yamcha wasn't worth listening to. We have two other models that are based on you. We will get them as soon as Trunks comes out of the hyperbolic time chamber. Seventeen squinted after hearing this. He comes out tomorrow, right? If that's the case, we just come back in a few days. If we enter that time room or whatever, it doesn't really matter if we only come in a week, right? So, until you are done, we are going out and have some fun. Seventeen answered. Evidently, he spoke for eighteen and sixteen as well. Since they didn't refute anything he said. Krillin wanted to say something, but they left as quickly as they arrived. Although the two groups allied themselves, they were still doubtful of each other. It was best for them to separate for now. A day passed slowly for the Z Fighters as they were still tense from the overall situation. They noticed that two figures slowly stepped outside of the temple. It was Vegeta and Trunks. Vegeta had regained his arrogant expression after being beaten by a woman. He had lost a lot of confidence. After all, he had finally achieved to become a Super Scion only to be beaten by the second fight he had. Now, however, he had regained his pride and was confident in beating the androids. Trunks came out with a solemn face. He still gave off a serious aura like before, maybe even more so, but what was clearly different was the confidence he was exuding. Thanks for waiting, guys. Did we miss anything? Trunks asked while walking outside. It is good to have you back. Things have gotten much worse since you've been gone. Goku greeted Trunks. Trunks went on how they could have come out earlier but Vegeta didn't want to until he perfected his form. Quiet. You have said enough. Our training is not to be discussed. Ever. Vegeta interrupted Trunks. So, you have gotten stronger. Goku smirked as he looked at Vegeta. HMHM. Maybe. I will take care of everything now. There is no need to attempt training, Kakarot, because I am sure you wouldn't even survive it. Besides, I can guarantee that I won't need your help to take care of the androids. You fool. Tien shouted but was quickly interrupted by Piccolo. I don't know how much stronger you have become, Vegeta, but the androids are no longer threats to us. What? Vegeta was shocked because he was sure that no one besides him would be able to handle them. Were they already destroyed? Trunks was equally shocked to hear that those monstrous androids were no threat anymore which could only mean that they were destroyed or became good. But would those androids really change sides? No. Another threat has come back. Broly has come back with two followers. Broly that wanna be legendary Super Saiyan? Vegeta shouted out with a bit of unrest in his eyes. He could clearly remember how Goku and Trunks were easily pummeled by Broly's group. He said that in 13 days we had a chance to beat one of his followers. If we succeed he would hold his promise of only attacking in 7 years. If we fail, he would kill everyone and destroy Earth. Vegeta and Trunks still had shocked expression on their face. Vegeta's face, however, quickly distorted into one of anger as he gritted his teeth. So, if we defeat on of his henchmen, he would give us amnesty. What a joke! I am the Prince of Dash, Vegeta's words were stuck in his throat as he looked at the two figures that were approaching. Raditz, you are still alive? How Dash, Vegeta said with disbelief. It is a bit complicated. But basically I was revived by Broly through the Dragon Balls. Vegeta's eyes constricted as he let his eyes wander to the woman beside Raditz. He could tell that she shared some resemblance with Goku and Raditz. Jain of course noticed his gaze. I am the mother of these two. I had some influence in the Scion community until I fled from Broly's reign. His reign? Wait, do you mean? Vegeta's thoughts were in tumult with the information he was getting. Yes, he was declared the new king of the Scion race. Our numbers are just in the hundreds, but many have of them have accepted his reign. This traitors all of you. There is only me left with royal blood. No one else has rights to the throne. Vegeta was almost losing it as he started panting. Science only respect the strong. The only one who can reign now must defeat him. You shut your mouth. You insolent dash Vegeta started cursing. He was on the edge after hearing that he was abandoned by his race. Be careful of what you say. Raditz cut into his speech. Vegeta was already boiling in rage. Fine. I will show you who the real heir to the throne is. Vegeta shot into the air and was about to look for Broly. But he was quickly blocked by Goku and Piccolo. You can't. We can't risk for Broly to cut our time even further. You. Out of my way or you will regret it. Piccolo and Goku stayed silent but showed no intention of moving away. Have it your way. Vegeta's hair immediately changed into a golden color, but his key didn't seem to stop as it kept increasing. The flame-like key grew in size and kept bursting out. 
His muscles expanded and his power became overwhelmingly stronger than before. With a golden light burst, a shockwave pushed everything near him outwards. Shortly after the light dimmed again until it revealed Vegeta, who had reached Super Saiyan second grade. Vegeta smirked. He saw the slight frown on Piccolo's face but as he watched Goku and how calm he was, he looked like what Vegeta had achieved was nothing spectacular. This infuriated him even more. Hmph. <laughs> you will see. You are no match for me anymore. He directly dashed towards Goku intending to attack him. But before he could Goku screamed out and pushed Vegeta away with a key burst as Goku turned Super Saiyan. Goku kept shouting as he pulled out even more energy. Like a storm raging, his energy changed the flow of the clouds as his power kept increasing, easily overshadowing what Vegeta just showed. The shock for Vegeta was imaginable. After all the training, after thinking he had once again surpassed Goku, he was being overtook again. Vegeta, to forcefully raise your key will only get you to your level. But to reach the next step, you need to master Super Saiyan completely. You have to make Super Saiyan a natural state. Vegeta's eyes widened, but after hearing what Goku said, he gritted his teeth. Stop talking and show me your strength. He didn't say anything unnecessary anymore and directly dashed at Goku, who didn't move at all. For the spectators, Vegeta instantly arrived in front of Goku and released a barrage of attacks, but Goku easily evaded them all with minimal movement. He stepped to the side, evading Vegeta's kick and directly punched him in the stomach while grabbing Vegeta's leg. Because he was being held, his body stayed in place. He was pulled back to Goku and without being able to resist, Goku started beating him up, easily breaking through any defenses Vegeta tried to put up. Goku karate chopped him onto the lookout again and calmly landed a few meters away. Vegeta slowly stood up again, visibly injured by the beating. Even I was easily beaten by Broly and I didn't hold anything back. The only hope for us now is against his followers. Train another day in the hyperbolic time chamber and we may be able to win. Sage. Vegeta spitted out a mouthful of blood before transforming back to his base. He clenched his fist and then turned around and walked away. Trunks looked at Vegeta, who was contemplating about something, before turning back to Goku. I will go now and return in a few days, Trunks told them. Tien had explained everything to him while Vegeta and Goku were fighting. He was now filled in and knew what to do. You sure you don't need Goku to go with you? Tien asked. I am. They are no match for me anymore. I will bring them back, don't worry. It will take some time to refill the energy to travel. Since the androids won't bother us anymore after I have taken care of them. It will only take a few days until I am able to return. Alright, good luck then. The Z fighters wished him good luck as Trunks prepared his time machine. He traveled back to his time shortly afterwards. In the meantime, Goku and Gohan prepared to go inside the time chamber. Goku had a feeling that Gohan will be strong enough to make a difference after he had trained him. He had always felt that in Gohan slumbered tremendous potential and now was the time to awaken it. Jine and Raditz would be the next after the two, then Piccolo and afterwards the human fighters. By then Trunks should return already, if not, Vegeta would take another turn alone. They tried to make time for anyone to go inside at least twice with the exception of the androids. Cell included. For days have passed until Trunks had returned. The human fighters were still inside the room of spirit and time. Trunks had brought back two unconscious androids. Before they could wake up, Trunks and Piccolo headed towards the island. Cell was supposed to wait on. It didn't take them long to arrive as they didn't have to hide their key at all. They quickly spotted Cell, who was actually meditating, levitating above a rock. It was probably boredom or Broly's threat that made him train. Either way, it would be beneficial for the upcoming fight. Without saying anything, Trunks threw the two bodies unceremonial in front of Cell. Of course, their impression of Cell was a bad one as the first thing Cell did after hibernating was to eradicate a city. Not to mention with what method he had to deploy to get the time machine. Cell had noticed their arrival and grinned maliciously as he saw the two bodies, who were slowly waking up, lying in front of him. Without waiting any longer, he started gobbling up Future 17. Cell's body was glowing brightly as his key started leaking out of his body. With a key burst, a shockwave pushed the air and the ground outwards. Piccolo and Trunks shielded their eyes from the intense light. Cell body started changing as it started to grow in size, his muscles expanded, and his overall look changed. Arcs of lightning popped into existence all around his body as he completed his transformation. He reached his semi-prefect from and was only one step away from reaching perfection. Future 18 was shocked at the strength this creature had shown after absorbing her brother. She couldn't believe what was happening. 
They were having fun just a moment ago until Trunks had arrived much stronger than before. He easily beat them and now has thrown them as food to some monster. Even Piccolo, who she killed, was alive and well. She didn't understand anything that was going on. She was trembling all over from terror. She gritted her teeth and came to a quick decision. She could only think about getting away as far and fast as she could possibly be. She quickly created distance, making her best to escape by diving into the ocean. Cell obviously noticed her escape but was merely looking at his fist as he clenched it. He was leisurely spectating his body, adapting to it. Trunks and Piccolo saw her escape but didn't move a single muscle. Cell looked up towards the two. You let her escape? I thought you would help me become perfect. Cell said with a smile. Humph. We already brought them unconscious to your feet and you still let one flee. Go fetch her yourself. Piccolo growled before sitting down on a rock meditating. Trunks only crossed his arms while watching Cell closely. Oh my, you don't have to be so moody. Ha ha ha, you should be happy. This is a great opportunity. You will be the first two who will see this perfect being. Cell quickly dashed off with a smile on his face. Never would he have imagined that after killing Trunks, another version would help him achieve his goal. It was truly ironic. Maybe I should thank Broly for indirectly helping him. Ha ha ha, Cell thought as he happily searched for future 18. Piccolo and Trunks saw how he flew after 18 and quietly followed. Although they looked disinterested to follow, they still had to make sure that Cell wouldn't risk anyone's life. Trunks took out what looked like a dragon radar with only a single blinking point on it. It was something that Future Bulma had invented after analyzing the unconscious androids, in case they needed to locate the other androids. Trunks looked at the direction 18 was heading and started frowning slightly. A few hundred kilometers away, Future 18 jumped out of the water and landed on an island. Hi H A H A. I have to get to a city, hide among the people. Surely Trunks and Piccolo wouldn't allow Cell to clear that area. She was fully aware of tactics to lure people out and the best way was just to bomb the area. The target wouldn't stay in the explosion and directly flee. She had done it numerous times with her brother as she was hunting humans. Trunks had always tried his best to help the humans escape. Now she counted on this trait of Trunks, 18. Where are you my dear? Your brother is waiting. Ha ha ha. She looked into the distance and saw a small dot approaching her position quickly. She couldn't believe how quickly that monster was moving. She saw how Cell throw a key blast at a nearby island. With a huge explosion the island was immediately pulverized. She quickly looked around, hoping to find a nearby city, but she couldn't find anything. She hastily looked around until she found a small village. She barely saw a hundred villagers, but this was better than nothing. Without hesitation she quickly entered the ocean and headed there underwater, trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. Suddenly a golden light beam passed her just a meter in front of her. A huge explosion followed which flung her out of the water. She heavily landed back on the island. She was slightly dizzy but could still tell what was being said. Thank you, Trunks. She almost got to that settlement. Now 18. Ready to be absorbed. She could hear how that monster was slowly walking towards her. This was the end. There was no escaping it. She thought about calling for help but who would be able to help he? Who was willing? Trunks who she had tormented for years and killed all his friends and former teacher, or Piccolo, who she had personally killed. The answer was obvious. Her mind was filled with despair. She couldn't even start crying as she was picked up by Cell, who was relishing in the sight of her. He could see her unwillingness to be absorbed and struggle for a bit, but in front of his newly attained strength, she was easily overwhelmed. She wailed around but she had no chance against Cell. Without a hitch Cell absorbed her. After 18 was absorbed, Cell's body once again shone brightly. This time it was more intense as more energy was being leaked. Increasingly more energy was exuded by Cell until a green sphere formed around him. The sheer energy being exuded attracted the lightning from the near clouds. The energy quickly covered the whole planet as Cell's energy kept increasing. More dark clouds formed in the air. Water spouts appeared all around the island and the wind was storming. Lightning repeatedly hit the sphere. It was like the end of the world has finally come. Only Cell's shadow could be seen through the sphere while he was transforming. This took a few moments until all the energy was retracted to Cell and shot back up into the sky in a bright flash like a grand explosion. A short moment later the light dimmed, and Cell's figure appeared once again. It was glowing in a green hue. The glow stopped and for the first time revealed his perfect form to this universe. He quietly started expecting his arm and punched out a couple of times as he felt the changes. 
With every second, he felt more satisfied with this new body he had gained. He took a deep breath. At last, the perfect being has been born. The moment he said that an arrogant expression formed on his face. He looked at Piccolo and Trunks. He knew he could stomp them into the ground if he wanted to. But, although I am perfect, I need more time to adapt to this body and accumulate more power. I have infinite potential and my strength is already monstrous. But still, this won't be enough to defeat that monster named Broly. Don't you want to show me now how to become stronger? Cell asked teasingly, looking at Piccolo who was slightly sweating. Trunks was gritting his teeth and clenching his fist. If it weren't for the threat Broly posed, he would never allow Cell to advance. Follow me. Without waiting for a response, Piccolo headed off towards the lookout. For another year, he would accompany Cell into the hyperbolic time chamber and train him. With this he may create a monster they all wouldn't be able to defeat, but this had to be done if they wanted to survive this. Besides he could tell by what Cell said that his target wasn't only Broly's followers but Broly himself. The human fighters had already exited the room and were taking deep breaths on the lookout. They then saw how Piccolo and Trunks landed on the lookout with a tall being, following them. It was clear to them that this had to be Cell. Cell didn't hide his strength and was intimidating the fighters. Vegeta leaned against a wall, looking over. Even he felt slightly threatened by Cell, but as soon as he went inside the room again, he would surpass them all. Vegeta firmly believed this. After he had heard what Kakarot had said, he pondered over its feasibility to make Super Scion into a natural state. Although he hated to admit it, Kakarot was most likely right, proven by Goku's strength. Besides he had no other approach on increasing his strength, he could as well try it. The androids had come a few days later and went inside the room of spirit and time as well. Days passed with them all taking turns to train. Broly's senses had already covered the whole planet and beyond, reaching into space. Nothing could escape him anymore. He had already noticed Taro and A's arrival a day ago. They had let him be after seeing how he was still immersed in his training. The day of his little game had already arrived. He also knew that Goku and Gohan still had to come out of their training session. The other Z fighters, Cell and the androids were already waiting in an awkward silence. Although the time passed quickly for Broly, he knew the day for the battle had arrived. He slowly opened his eyes and stood up. Without saying anything, he snatched away the food out of Taro's hands again. Hey Dash, Broly ignored Taro's complaints as he suddenly noticed something. He fixed his attention to a few thousand kilometers away. This might cause some problems. Contrasting to his words, Broly was grinning ferociously. His gaze locked onto the direction like a beast looking at his prey. He noticed them approach. He quickly conjured up a small elevated stage for his own group to stand on when they weren't fighting. He capsuled the stage with a simple protection spell, which could handle mostly magic attacks and stray energy. After gobbling up the rest of the meat, he had stolen from Taro and finishing the stage, he went back to the middle of the arena. He had locked onto the ones who were approaching with his senses. By now his sensing skills weren't comparable to before. Although now he didn't cover the whole planet, a few hundred kilometers were easily manageable with a bit of concentration. If he wanted to use it in battle without affecting his concentration at all, he could at most effectively use it in a periphery of a few dozens of kilometers. This might sound a lot for the average being in the universe but for mighty fighters like Broly in high-level battles, this would only give him a slight edge. In the time he had trained his senses, the army of the earth had come and bombarded him, but neither him nor the stage had sustained any damage. After seeing no effect, they had sent the strongest man on earth. Now while Broly was waiting for the Z fighters, Satan had stepped on the arena saying something about today's the day he would teach Broly a lesson. Broly first ignored him, but as soon as Satan touched and Satan's perspective punched him, he gave him a glare. Satan was immediately overwhelmed by the aura. Broly was releasing. He felt like he died numerous times with that single glare. His knees started shaking until he collapsed to the ground. He was so terrified that he started leaking. Broly released a key burst, sending Satan flying before he could sully his arena. From the impact alone, normal people would have died, but Satan was good in taking a beating so he probably survived, not that Broly really cared. What he did care however, were the people Satan had brought with him. Broly only glanced at the humans who were hiding behind a rock. Suddenly the camera was being pulled out of the cameraman's hands and flew on its own directly onto the stage, where Taro and A's were waiting on. The camera pointed to the arena. Broly didn't like the fact that Satan was partly responsible for the public ignorance towards Key especially in face of the crisis named Cell. Maybe this event would have given birth to a new era. 
Although in Broly's eyes, the Earthlings aren't worth mentioning, but perhaps with time, they would become a strong force to be reckoned with. He thought about how Krillin, Yamcha, or Tien in the future were easily able to handle the former Scions, who had conquered numerous planets. Even someone like Frieza, who ruled over a part of a galaxy, would be no match against them. Either way, he just thought it would be interesting to see the changes on Earth if he showed the general public what was possible. With everything set up, he only waited for the participants to arrive. A few dozens of minutes later, Goku and Piccolo's son had exited the Room of Spirit and Time and shortly after, headed together with the rest to his location. After arriving, they directly landed just outside of the arena. I have to say, I quite like your simplistic style, Cell said as he inspected the corner pillars. The Z fighters, mostly the human fighters, were quite tense. The Scions were more relaxed but still solemn, this was the same for the androids. Cell was probably the only one who seemed unconcerned. Even Vegeta didn't show any arrogance, just his usual resting bitch face. There were 14 people total in Goku's group. Seeing everyone arrive, Broly spoke out. Now the warriors of this planet have finally arrived to fight for their survival. I am sure the lot of you are excited about the upcoming battles. But I have to make some rules. Seeing that you have arrived with 14 people planning to fight against my two followers, I have to balance the situation a bit. If you just engage with each other without rules, I am afraid that Earth wouldn't exist tomorrow. Broly said with a grin. Earth fighters had appropriate angry expression. Broly implied that without his help, even with more people they would definitely lose. How much did he look down at them? Vegeta and Cell were especially angry, holding back, not to rush at Broly and attack him. First the basics. If you are killed or give up, you are out of this little game. If you are being thrown out of the arena or you lost conscious, you lost the match but after healing up you can try your luck again. You all have two tries. Of course, this rule only applies to you. My followers won't be giving some magical medicine as well. Broly said while glancing at the small bag on Krillin's waist. The number of people in the arena can be decided by the participants. If you suddenly want to help out your mate, you can but you can't go back outside as that would mean you give up. You can also fly, there aren't any boundaries to speak of in the air. Now, if you are ready, you can start. After saying that Broly flew to the stage with the camera. Earth's fighters were shocked at the rules. They could basically constantly send in as many people as they wanted until they defeated one of Broly's followers. Even if they are knocked out, they could try again later. These rules benefited them too greatly. Of course, the premise is that they make it out alive. Vegeta's face distorted in anger. He thinks we are just some children who can't fight. I will show you who the real king is, Broly. Cell's face was solemn. Not only him, but everyone knew what this implied. Either Broly severely underestimated them or he was just that confident in his followers. They knew that he shouldn't know about the hyperbolic time chamber, so they hoped it was the former, but a feeling told them that this wasn't the case. Without saying anything, Ace jumped inside the arena. He would be the first opponent for them. These rules had disrupted their combat order a bit, so they quickly gathered together before deciding who to send in first. After conversing with each other, they sent in their first fighters. That's right. From the start, they sent more than one. Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien, they were basically the weakest of them with the exception of Tien. Tien's tri-beam was a strong attack, not to be underestimated. Broly also noticed how the androids had repositioned himself slightly. They would be ready to help them out at any moment. The three positioned themselves in a triangle with Tien at the front. They all took in their battle stances. Even A's took on one as well, but this didn't mean much. He was always one who didn't play around much. Of course, he himself had pride. Broly wondered when he would go Super Scion. Broly raised his arms forwards. Let the fight for survival begin. Broly swung down his arm. At the moment he did, Tien, Krillin and Yamcha stomped the ground, propelling themselves forwards. A's was quietly observing their movement. Krillin and Yamcha stomped the ground again and quickly headed at A's from the sides. Tien was the first to come in striking range. He stabbed out with his fingers, directly at A's eyes. A's tilted his head slightly and reached out for Tien's arm. Yamcha and Krillin were about to reach him as well. A's pulled Tien in front of Krillin while diverting Yamcha's kick with a simple palm strike. While Krillin crashed into Tien, A's moved out. His palm followed along Yamcha's leg, directly landing on his stomach. Yamcha instantly coughed out blood as he was sent flying like a meteor. His body generated a visible air shockwave as he flew out of the ring. Aze noticed the key fluctuations behind him. He quickly jumped up, 
evading a key disc. Before he could relax, the disc took a sharp turn as it followed A's into the air. A shot a key blast at it, instantly destroying it. He suddenly sensed something above him. He quickly looked up and saw how Tien put his palms facing himself next to his face. Solar flare. A bright light completely blinded A's. While he was blinded a voice rang out not far from Tien's position. Kath me. Hami. A's noticed the key being gathered and directly turned Super Scion. Hiya. Before the attack could hit him, a barrier formed around A's. A's still hovering in air was pushing against the attack. Because his strength was immensely more powerful than Krillin's, he easily withstood it. A's slowly regained his eyesight, but Tien didn't let him any time to fully adapt. Try beam. A short beam directly landed on A's barrier. This was Tien's strongest attack. Even against stronger people, it would be somewhat effective, but the difference here was too great. Try beam. Even together they couldn't push him out of bounds, let alone hurt him. But it seemed that was something they expected. 16, 17 and 18 positioned themselves next to the two human fighters and gathered immense energy into their arms. 16 had detached both of his underarms and pointed it at A's. With a flash three additional lights headed at A's, who had finally fully regained his sight. Seeing the three new participants join in, he only furrowed his eyebrows. His key started rising dramatically until lightning arcs appeared all over his body and his hair became even spikier. The barrier moved between him and the attacks. Aze put out his arms and released even more energy as he put everything into the barrier that now turned into bright sun. He converted his barrier into an attack. With a burst, it suddenly pushed away the other attacks, transforming into quick moving beam, instantly enveloping Earth's fighters. The beam only lasted an instant but afterwards six smoking figures fell motionless to the ground. Without anything catching them, they heavily landed on the arena. They all had large burn marks all over them and 16's body was opened and had many metal parts revealed to the outside. They were in no condition to fight anymore. Krillin and Tien had already fainted. The androids were still conscious, but it was already clear who won this first little bout. Aze looked indifferently at their figures. He calmly landed on the arena. In the meantime, Broly looked at Krillin and Tien and shot them off the arena with an invisible shockwave. They quickly exited the arena and were caught by Trunks and Goku. Broly didn't shoot the others out as they were still conscious. The only way this could conclude was for them to give up or to simply die. Either option was not something they could afford. The androids were slowly getting up, seemingly wanting to continue fighting, but seeing how clumsily they got up, it was clear there wasn't much reason for them to even try. He. <laughs> You aren't as strong as you portray yourself. Seventeen spat out. By now they could somewhat gauge the strength of Broly's followers' power level. The reason why the weakest of the group started their attack was to see how Aze would handle them. If he could beat them in their base form, there wouldn't be much hope for the Z Fighters, but now seeing Aze transforming twice to handle their sneak attack gave them confidence to succeed. A's indifferent expression turned into a cold smile. He pointed his palm at the three androids. Visible golden key arcs traveled to his arm. In front of his palm, his key gathered to a small sphere. The expression of the androids changed, seeing this. They sensed the immense key being gathered. The Z Fighter's eyes widened as well. Even Cell was deeply frowning. You were saying? Without waiting for a response, the sphere burst open and numerous thin beams shot out as a result. They almost instantaneously reached the three. Each of them suddenly released all their remaining energy into a barrier around them. The barrier held together for a second before easily being pierced by a beam. After one went through, their barrier shattered. Their bodies were completely exposed to the remaining beams that directly pierced through their bodies without resistance. After piercing through their bodies, the beams flew past the shocked spectators and obliterated mountains in the background. The androids were flung outside the arena with numerous small holes all over their bodies. They were already close to death, but Jine quickly reached them and fed them a healing capsule, barely saving them. Although she was able to heal 17 and 18 with the healing capsules, 16 wasn't human, he was a machine. A healing capsule wouldn't do jack. His energy was rapidly depleting through the created leaks all over his body. Please win. Protect the ear dash mid-sentence 16's eyes dimmed. And his voice stopped Gohan looked blankly at 16's motionless body. Broly observed Gohan. In the last week, Broly was able to see everything on the lookout. He knew that the two have befriended themselves with each other in the short time, the androids had visited them for training. Gohan suddenly shouted out. His key rose rapidly, easily entering Super Scion, 
but his power was still increasing, showing no sign of stopping. Everyone looked at Gohan who was losing himself in rage. His key crushed the stones around him and arcs of lightning appeared on his body. His hair rose further to the sky and with a golden light burst, all around him were pushed back. Gohan was ascending. Broly was smiling as he saw how easily Gohan was entering ascended Super Saiyan. This wasn't his first time he had transformed into that form. Broly thought as he looked at Goku, who was just staring back. This only confirmed Broly's assumption. Both of them have reached that level. You will pay for that. Gohan's raging voice sounded out. The others were surprised by the sudden increase in strength. Without caring for their reactions, Gohan directly dashed onto the arena. With a stomp on the ground, Gohan's body propelled forwards. He squinted his eyes. Instead of backing away, Aze took on a battle stance waiting for Gohan to reach him. Gohan was only a meter away from Aze before he suddenly disappeared, only to appear behind Aze. Gohan kicked out like a whip towards A's lower back. How naive! A's back flipped, easily evading Gohan's kick. A stomped down hard at Gohan's back head. As soon as he made contact, A's eyes constricted. His foot phased through Gohan's head. Surprisingly, Gohan appeared behind him again. But before he could strike, A's vanished. At high speed, they tried dozens of times a second to breach through their opponent's defense. Explosion-like collisions sounded out, devastating the environment around the arena without touching it directly. The spectating Z Fighter's eyes were seemingly looking at random places in the air all the time. Even they were barely able to follow the fight. The ground burst open, clouds dispersed through the shockwaves and from time to time, complete mountains were covered in intense light. For the Earthlings watching the fight through the TV, this was simply a battle of gods. A battle so terrifying that they tried to convince themselves that this was all fake but the Tremors seemingly tried to make them realize that this was the brutal reality. Gohan, like a meteor, shot to the arena. He was too fast to stop and landed heavily on the arena. He bounced a couple of meters before stopping himself with all four of his limbs. Now that he stopped, everyone saw his condition clearly. He had several bruises all over, but one of his arms was particular injured. Half of his underarm was covered by his blood. Ace slowly landed a few meters away, his armor had some cracks in it, but he himself was mostly uninjured. It was clear as day that Aze was far above Gohan. Be it power itself or their martial experience. Jain suddenly transformed into a beam, directly heading for the stage, wanting to confront Aze. She couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't just watch as her grandchild was beaten up. Mom! He is a warrior. Don't dishonor him. Raditz shouted out and intercepted her. Jain was shocked at the sudden appearance. Raditz! He is just a child, we have T-Dash, Mom, don't. No matter his age, he is a Scion warrior who has trained for two years for this day. Now his friend was killed, and it's his obligation to take revenge. Raditz spoke out without room for negotiation. Jain looked back at Goku for support, but he just ignored her. He stood there with crossed arms as he looked at his son's struggle against A's. Kamehame. Haya. Gohan's Kamehameha brightened up the surroundings in a blue hue as it directly headed for A's. Ra ha ha ha! Aze stopped the advancing Kamehameha wave with both his hands. His key flared up, covering half the arena. Veins on his forehead and on his arms bulged. Aze swung his arms upwards, sending the wave attack above his head. The key beam was redirected into the sky. Boom! In the sky, the key attack exploded. The sky was lit up for seconds before it finally dimmed again. Not bad, kiddo. Aze immediately appeared in front of Gohan who was extremely shocked. Aze took on a full power attack of his and redirected it without a single scratch. While Gohan was distracted for a split second, Aze crouched down and punched out while looking coldly into Gohan's eyes. Gohan's back deformed as if Aze's hand was going to pierce it any second. The air was instantly punched out of him. Gohan took several steps backwards, covering his stomach with his hands. He was clearly in immense pain and was barely able to breath. He could only take short breaths as he staggered back. Aze didn't hesitate to follow up. Gohan wasn't able to resist, even if he saw the knee closing in on his face. He was sent flying parallel to the ground by the impact, quickly approaching the edges of the arena. Aze appeared a few meters in the flying path and as Gohan passed him, he elbowed him into the ground. Gohan immediately spewed out blood and downgraded to his base. He was struggling to move, wanting to stand up, but only a few fingers on one of his arms were able to move. Not giving up, 
even though you are clearly outmatched. So, be it. Ace stretched out a palm at the lying Gohan. A key sphere was quickly created in his palm and shot out. The ground cracked slightly from the attack and started smoking due the high temperature from the attack. The crack was right next to Gohan's head. A's arm was being firmly held by Goku. In the last moment, Goku had appeared and redirected the attack before A's could finish Gohan. A's eyes squinted slightly but he didn't say anything. He yanked out his arm and took a few steps back. Goku suddenly looked at Broly. Does it matter? Who knocked one of us out of the ring to have another chance? Goku gave Broly a meaningful glance. Broly smiled. Of course not. Good. Goku picked up Gohan and threw him off the arena. Raditz caught him and quickly fed him a healing capsule. Aze, is it? Let me tell you, you will lose against me. Goku said solemnly. It was clear he wasn't speaking nonsense, he meant business. Try me. Aze snorted. Goku just grinned and then crossed his arms in front of him. His ki started rising, directly entering Super Saiyan, but like Gohan his ki rose with no sign of stopping. The only difference to his son was that his ki rose far more quickly. His ki reached a critical point. He suddenly uncrossed his arms. With a gigantic burst, his power rose to another level. The created shockwave sent everything around away. Even the arena cracked under his feet. The ki he was releasing was ridiculous. The spectators were shocked seeing this. They shielded themselves from the onslaught of stray energy. Just the pressure he was releasing was enormous. Vegeta was gritting his teeth. Him too. Vegeta had made tremendous progress in his second time in the training chamber but compared to Goku's strength, it wasn't mentionable. Cell was frowning like Vegeta he made good progress and was confident on taking on Gohan but Goku on the other hand. It was difficult to say, if there was a difference in power it was negligible. Goku's hair stood on end and the high concentration of energy created lightning that swirled around his body. Goku took in his battle stance with one arm close to the ground, in front of him and one behind, above his head. Contrasting to the shocked expression of the spectators, Aes was looking at Goku indifferently. He stretched out on arm towards Goku and one close to the side of his face. Aes lowered his body slightly, steadying his body and ki. Goku seemed like a violent river, while Aes stood there like a boulder, cemented to the ground. For the outsiders, it looked like an unstoppable force was about to collide with an immovable object. Both of them didn't move. The atmosphere was tense until a small rock nearby rolled of a small rise. The atmosphere seemed to have been ripped and only a whooshing tone sounded out, followed with a loud bang. Goku's body had vanished from the spot, instantly arriving in front A's and punched out. A's had only moved slightly, blocking the strike to his face with his underarm. For a second, they stayed in that position like a grand stature. Their key intertwined and fought against each other. It was just a single second where they didn't move, and their gazes met. The next second, they both disappeared followed with numerous bangs that overlapped with each other. Shockwave after shockwave, parts of the arena were pulverized. The clouds had long been forcefully dispersed. The Z fighters had to distance themselves slightly. Cell's frown was deepening. The intensity of the fight kept increasing. They all slowly understood for themselves that Goku was probably the strongest of them and if he lost, they wouldn't be able to handle A's. Although Goku was confident in winning and he indeed was much stronger than everyone expected, so was A's. He didn't seem to have problems keeping up with Goku and his martial experience was superb. If Goku lost, they wouldn't be able to win, since A's wasn't the only follower they were fighting against. Taro didn't go on the arena yet, since he knew A's would be able to handle all of them. Now he had stopped eating and stood up, intently observing the fight. Seeing the increase of Goku's strength that had accrued in just two weeks, confused him greatly. How did he improve this quickly? From what I had sensed when you two were fighting two weeks ago, he wasn't even able to reach the next level. Now he not only reached it, but his strength had increased tremendously. HM? Didn't I tell you? They have a room where on day outside equals one year inside. They used it to train for the last two weeks. Well, one person can only enter twice for now. What? Seriously? What a hack! Taro watched the fight again, while biting off a steak from time to time. Why are you always eating? Broly looked at Taro speechlessly. Although he was a scion, he didn't need to eat constantly. Gulp. This T-Rex steak is just too awesome. I can't get enough. Taro said happily while lifting it into the air like it was a divine object. You have to fight soon. Don't overeat. Broly said before focusing on the fight again. Piccolo immediately told the others telepathically about the fact that Taro would step in soon. 
After hearing that Raditz, Jain, Trunk, Vegeta, Cell, and the now-healed Gohan prepared themselves mentally. How does he know about the hyperbolic time chamber? Piccolo thought as he looked at Broly, who suddenly returned the stare. Piccolo frowned after seeing and hearing Broly whisper to him. Good luck. Does he know that I could hear him? Piccolo thought. Goku saw an opening in A's defense and directly closed in to abuse it. He punched out, aiming at A's stomach. Goku's fist turned into a light beam and connected but not with A's stomach. A's had raised his knee intercepting the punch and pushed against it. Goku knew he couldn't advance and retracted his arm. Ace saw this and followed Goku's arm with his leg. He extended his leg that was just used for defending and struck at Goku's shoulder. Goku wasn't able to lean backwards in time and was struck badly. Goku's shoulder immediately started bleeding. A hole has been formed by the attack just now. A's foot was enveloped with a key, forming a point to easily pierce his opponent's defense. Goku was confident in taking punches and kicks with his body, but the method A's used would quickly bleed him out if he was struck more often by such an attack. Goku's skin and muscles were like paper in front of those attacks. Fortunately for Goku, the extensions weren't that long, otherwise his shoulder would be completely useless now. It felt like the attacks were extremely hardened, so it wouldn't collapse on contact if it met something incredibly sturdy, but what kind of person would have such a skin that would need attacks like that? Goku didn't think about it anymore and closed in again with a flying knee. Ace blocked it with both his hands. Goku grinned seeing this. He thrusted his palm out with a small, almost unnoticeable key sphere in it. His palm shot at A's head and was about to connect. A's only sneered and opened his mouth wide. A key sphere was quickly formed inside his mouth and shot out, meeting Goku's palm. A huge explosion enveloped the two. An instant later, two figures backed out quickly from the created smokescreen. Both flew around it and punched out. Their fists met, immediately dispersing the smokescreen to their side. Ace thrusted out his other arm. Goku was about to meet it, but in the last moment dodged to the sides. TCH, you really like to cut people. Goku mumbled as he looked at the enveloped arm of eyes. Once again it just covered his arm, barely extending out. His arm had transformed to a blade. Ace pointed it at Goku and in the next instant arrived just a meter away. Ace thrusted his arm blade at Goku, who was only able to tilt his head slightly, before backing up again. Goku felt the blood trickle down his cheek. It wasn't a deep cut, but it could have ended quiet differently if he was just a fraction of a second too late. Goku wiped away the blood and held up both his arms in front of him into a stance. You don't look so good. Didn't you say I would lose against you? Ace said with no expression on his face. Goku only frowned as a response. He really thought that after seeing him struggle against Gohan's Kamehameha and falling for their sneak attack. He knew that Ais may be more powerful than him, but that wouldn't guarantee his win. From what he could tell, Ais was struggling with group fights and against his son. His one-on-one -on -one capabilities didn't seem that high either. But now he realized that he had severely underestimated him, coupled with the progress in the time chamber. He was too sure in his victory. The key control of that guy is unreal and his adaptivity in close combat as well. He was very agile and could easily dodge a barrage of key blasts. Until now he had to use mirage attacks, distraction, feints and unconventional movement to get a solid hit in. Broly saw the frown on Goku's face and somewhat knew what he was thinking. Indeed, A's strong point wasn't to fight alone against many as he usually has someone to back him up, but he was very capable in one-on-one -on -one fights. He wasn't a combat instructor of the new generation for no reason. That was also a reason why he only used the basics against Gohan. He probably unconsciously regarded him as one of his students and therefore didn't cut him up. To use sturdy and short key blades was something he developed to fight Broly. Broly's bones were impossible for him to break and his skin dispersed all the energy, preventing any damage to his inner organs. The only way to inflict damage for someone weaker was to first cut open his skin and one could then go from there. Of course, that was his theory and until now, Aze wasn't able to do so. Really weird, why is Cell fighting with the Z Fighters? Either way, we will just proceed as planned. One figure contemplated out loud, while another was just listening and gave a slight nod. The two closed in to the fighting arena without being seen. H.A. Amazing. Goku was exhausted. He was heavily panting and his whole body trembled slightly. He had numerous cuts, holes and bruises all over his body. Some of the injuries were as long as 40 centimeters. He was standing on the arena, trying to catch his breath. Opposite of him was A's who had some bruises here and there, but nothing that could be said to be a serious injury. 
His breathing was as steady as before. Nothing indicated that he just had a heaven-devastating battle. Aze leaned slightly forward, preparing to dash at Goku and end this fight. But before he could do so, a blurry figure appeared a few meters beside him and with it, a dazzling light. H.A. A youthful voice sounded out. A blue beam headed right for A's. The blazing beam distorted the air with its high temperature and caved in the white tiles on the ground. A's wasn't able to dodge as it was already too close. T.S.H. Ha! A barrier formed around A's. It blocked the beam and broke it into several beams behind him. He saw the recovered Gohan gritting his teeth as he put all his might into this Kamehameha. Goku suddenly appeared beside him, nodded at his son and then cupped his hands, drawing it to his side. Kamehame. Haia. A similar but much stronger blue beam shot out directly at A's. In the flight it fused with Gohan's beam, forming a much bigger key beam. A's, with his barrier, was slightly pushed into the ground, forming a hole in the middle of the arena. A's was slightly pushed closer to the edge of the arena. He was gritting his teeth as he resisted the fused beam. With more effort he managed to stop, coming to a standstill with the two ascended super scions. His vision was obstructed by the gigantic blue key beam and the wave attack sounded out right in his face, but that couldn't hinder his ability to hear what was going on, on the other side of the beam. He heard several voices and he instantly knew what was going on. Kamehameha. Final Flash. Masenko. Makankasapo. Maiden Blast. Saturday Crush. Numerous key beams headed towards A's. They intermixed turning into a rainbow-colored beam it directly pulverizing the tiles as it pushed A's further back. Taro suddenly appeared beside and looked at A's who was rapidly being pushed to the arena's boundary. Need some help? Taro asked teasingly and proceeded to gather key in both of his palms. Do I look like I need Hell's P? The veins all over his body were already bulging, threatening to burst any second. He, Solar Buster. Ha! He thrusted both his hands forwards sending a bright golden key beam directly against the fused beam. The beam from Taro was strong, but against the incoming attacks it was slightly pushed backwards. Aze took the short delay of the beam and gripped his wrist with his other hand and poured all his energy into his open palm. The energy made his hand completely golden with arcs of golden lightning coming out to his sides. Collapsing star burst. A thick beam instantly fused with Taro's and resisted the incoming attack. Although Aze was somewhat exhausted with Taro who didn't spend one bit of his attack until now, they were able to not only equal out the attack but push it back. Taro, in raw power, was stronger than Aze but his strength in combat could be said to be less than his. In a beam struggle like this, he could show of his advantage. He started putting more energy into his attack and like a pulse, Aze and Taro's attack pushed the Z-Fighter's attacks further back. But as they were fighting, Krillin approached Goku from the side and fed him a Senzu bean in midst the struggle. After eating the bean, his power had instantly been recovered and without hesitation pushed everything inside his Kamehameha wave again. With the sudden boost, their beam steadily pushed Taro's and A's beam back. 17, 18, Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien quickly joined the others and blasted an attack of their own against their opponents. At this point, the arena was already a mess. No tile remained at its spot at the onslaught of this clash of beams. The ground was utterly ruined. A giant crater was formed by the impact. Every stray energy completely obliterated everything it touched. Taro and A's were being pushed back. Theoretically, it shouldn't be possible for them to contend with the Z Fighters' combined force. But surprisingly, they were holding on longer than their opponents thought. After seeing A's struggle against the father-son Kamehameha, they quickly decided to strike, even if Taro still had yet to make a move. This was an opportune chance that they couldn't miss. Every second now, the two Scions were threatened to be enveloped by their opponent's beam, but strangely Taro started smiling. Life force. Burn. Seeing the situation get out of their hands this quickly, Taro knew he had to go all out. To burn his life force was an ability he got after absorbing the Origin's blood crystal, boosting his strength tremendously for a short moment. Although he wasn't able to generate life force automatically like Broly, he could still accumulate it slowly. The struggle that seemed almost over was quickly reversed and with a huge boost, Taro and A's beam overtook their opponent's beam easily pushing all of them back. All 13 Earth's warrior were pushed back by the two followers of Broly. Any second now and they would be completely obliterated. If they didn't die from this attack, they would be severely injured. Of course, if a healing capsule and Senzu beans survived this attack, they would be able to make a comeback. But this would surely be a major setback and who knew if Taro or Aze still had another ace up their sleeves. 
They desperately pushed back, but no matter how much they put into their attacks, it didn't seem they would prevail. Broly, who was calmly watching the struggle, started frowning. Seriously now? How unfortunate. Just as they were about to win, as if his words were trigger, Cell's aura suddenly turned dark purple and his strength increased by leaps and bounds. Like the struggle was nothing to worry about, Cell's increase easily pushed the beam away once again. Taro and A's were shocked, seeing the sudden increase in power. They couldn't believe that they still had that much power. The two were already pushing their key to the max. There wasn't any reserves left. The key beam overpowered theirs and shortly after enveloped the two. The beam traveled further into the distance, carrying with it nothing but destruction. A devastating attack that could wipe out any star in the universe traveled into the empty star after leaving Earth. Ha! We did dash. Krillin shouted out but quickly stopped after looking at the spot. Taro and A's struggled just a minute ago. The two of them were still there, kneeling on the ground. It was clear that they had completely exhausted themselves. A's even fell to the side. He couldn't even support his body slightly, only able to breath. But what attracted their attention weren't the two defeated scions, but the one that stood in front of them. A three-meter giant with glowing green hair and deep dark green eyes. An almost transparent green barrier around the three slowly vanished into energy bits, flying off into the sky. The giant looked at them coldly, making them shiver, but they quickly realized something. He wasn't looking at them but behind the group. Goku and the others seemed to have sensed something and turned around. Standing on an elevated rock were two figures. A beautiful slender woman wearing a tight-fitting red and black bodysuit showing off her curves. She had long white hair, light blue skin, and was holding a long staff. Slightly in front of her was a man. He had blue skin, white hair, and two lines going from his eyes over his cheeks to his jaw. He, as well, had a red body suit on with a white armor, with a symbol similar to infinity in the middle, on top of it and cape-like pants covering his legs. As I thought you had already detected us. I am wondering why Dash, she started speaking with a smile on her face, but before she could finish, Broly had raised his arms and shot out dozens of key blasts at once. Although he still had his eyes on her, his attack was not. Cell's eyes were bloodshot, and as soon as he saw the key blast heading towards him, he fired off an instant Kamehameha, destroying the incoming attack. The two attacks neutralized themselves, but an instant later, Broly sent out another volley. Cell sent out another attack to meet them as well, but Broly wasn't stopping as he quickly overwhelmed and drowned Cell in hundreds of key blasts. With every key blast, the earth trembled and the view on Cell was blocked out by the created smokescreen. Tawa and Mira, I give you ten seconds to piss off from my timeline. You know us? Tawa was shocked as at this time, no one should know of her. Not only wasn't she even born yet, she was from the demon realm as well, a realm sealed away from the rest of the universe, it shouldn't be possible for anyone to know them, even if this was a new timeline. 8, 7, 6. She was awakened by the countdown and smiled slightly after noticing that he ignored her question. It doesn't matter if you know who we are. We only need your energy. Tawa pointed her staff at Broly and a dark purple energy immediately enveloped Broly. Broly just crossed his arms and continued to look at Tawa indifferently. The dark aura dissipated, not affecting Broly at all. Not affected by my magic, how could Dash? For Tawa frowned as she listened to the countdown. She couldn't help but feel threatened by this version of Broly. She had already met one version on New Planet Vegeta a few years further in the past, but this one in front of her gave off a completely different vibe. He was far more dangerous and seemed hostile to them. To Mira get rid of him, Tawa pointed at Broly. Without hesitation Mira dashed at Broly. On the way, with a burst, his key increased tremendously and his speed accelerated to a terrifying degree. No one of the Z-Fighters were able to follow his movements. Myra's fist passed Broly's head, which was slightly tilted to the side. Their eyes met, and the time seemed to have stopped. Mira suddenly widened his eyes as he looked down, seeing a fist deep in his stomach. Zero the next instant, his body shot back but almost immediately stopped again. The momentum was terrifying, but he had already regained his bearing after a few dozen meters. Mira looked at Broly solemnly. He noticed that Broly's eyes had changed to a yellow color, but he quickly dismissed it. You are a lot stronger than your counterpart. This might be a small challenge. Broly suddenly vanished and reappeared in front of Mira and Karate chopped at Myra's head, who raised one arm to meet and divert it to the side. As soon as Broly's attack met Mira, he realized his mistake. 
This wasn't an attack he could easily block. Mira knew there was not enough time to dodge, so he raised both his arms in order to block it. Mira kneeled down from the force and the surrounding ground was directly crushed, creating a rapidly expanding crater. Broly didn't wait for Mira and instantly shot at Myra's face with his knee. Myra's head was thrown back and his upper body bent backwards. He slid over the ground for a few meters before coming to a stop. His body remained in that awkward position for a second, before he straightened himself again and stood up as if nothing happened. Mira silently wiped away the blood, coming out of his nose, before his body made his way to Broly. Although Broly was able to see his movements with all his senses, strangely he still was unable to react. Mira kneed Broly in the stomach and immediately followed up with a headbutt, sending Broly into the ground. Broly rolled backwards for a few dozen meter before he could rebalance his body and use his feet to stop his momentum. Only after creating a few meters of trenches along the way, he came to a stop. Mira had already closed in again and punched out. Broly's face was distorted from anger and directly met Myra's fist with his own. The impact made both of them stagger back for a few steps. Suddenly Broly's key rose rapidly as his body shrunk. Mira recognized the danger coming from Broly and quickly made his way to interrupt him. However, before he could close in, he was met with a key burst, pushing him back. Mira regained his balance and shielded himself with his arm. The intense light from the key slowly dimmed down and the trembling in the ground ceased as well. Mira looked at Broly, who had shrunk to 2.5 meters. From time to time, lightning arcs appeared all over his body and his hair was pointing into the sky. He had transformed to the next level, ascended legendary Super Scion. Broly shot a key blast at Mira, who directly deflected it far away. After Mira got rid of the key blast, Broly suddenly arrived in front of him and stabbed at his stomach with his fingers. Mira leaned his body to the side and reduced the damage caused. The side of his stomach was slashed open. Blood was gushing out. Mira quickly backed away and pressed on his wound to reduce the bleeding. Mira then used some key to close the wound, preventing it from losing more blood. Broly closed in again and relentlessly released a storm of attacks. Mira was easily overpowered and pushed back, only able to block the attacks without having any time to counterattack. Without warning Myra's energy sword, ascending to a new level. Broly was surprised. He didn't know that Mira was still hiding this much energy in this kind of situation. Of course, Mira already would have went all out if it weren't for the fact that they would be easier noticeable by Kronoa, the Supreme Kai of Time. Now with Broly's key masking his, it wouldn't be that bad. But Mira needed to end this quickly. After the huge increase of power, Mira started counterattacking, directly landing a shot at Broly's stomach, making him grasp for air. Mira followed up with a strike to Broly's face, sending him flying into the sky. Mira dashed after Broly and quickly caught up to him. He hammered down, sending Broly into the ground. A huge smokescreen was created, enveloping Broly's figure completely. Mira raised his arms in an attempt to shoot a key blast at the smokescreen, but a key burst suddenly pushed the smoke away. Broly was standing there seemingly uninjured. He suddenly stretched his armor at his collar and pulled at a string, taking something out from beneath his armor. Mira was slightly stunned at this action, making him forget to attack right away or it was curiosity that made him not follow up with anything. Mira squinted his eyes as he saw a golden necklace being pulled out. The gem in the middle of the necklace was glowing brightly in a green hue. Broly pulled the necklace over his head and as soon as he did, his key vehemently lashed out, crushing everything around him. Boulders were immediately pulverized and the ground caved in. The whole world started shaking like it was about to collapse in itself. Mountain peaks in the far distance collapsed and tornadoes started forming in the distance. Mira had difficulties breathing, the pressure was immense. Tawa sensed the enormous key and immediately knew that they couldn't defeat Broly. Mira, we are leaving. Tawa flew towards him. Mira was gritting his teeth but quickly followed Tawa's instructions and backed away towards her. Broly tilted his head as if he was confused. You want to leave? I am no longer suppressed. Now the fun just starts. Besides, I already gave you 10 seconds, but you wouldn't listen. Now you will pay with your blood. Mira frantically rushed towards Tawa who was already preparing her magic to open a time rift to escape. Suddenly Mira felt his air pipe being crushed. Only after being lifted, he noticed Broly standing between him and Tawa. Broly raised an arm, pointing his palm at Tawa, before a horrifying amount of key was being gathered in it. Broly, if you don't help your friends, they will die here and now. Tawa pointed at Gohan and Cell, 
who were enveloped by a dark purple aura, preparing a Kamehameha for Aes and Taro. Aes and Taro were currently fighting off 17 and 18, who had a similar aura around them. The two had already thrown in a healing capsules, but those aren't as instantaneously as Senzu beans, so they were struggling against the powered-up androids. The other Z fighters were knocked out. It wasn't clear if they were knocked out by the possessed or by Aes and Taro. But Broly didn't even bother to look at them. He only grinned at her desperate efforts. Tawa gritted her teeth. She thought that this version might care about his friends. She had to risk. Cell suddenly turned towards Gohan and sent his Kamehameha wave at him. Gohan noticed it and sent his wave to meet it. How could this be? He is under my control dash Tawa was shocked, seeing Cell unexpectedly attack Gohan. As shocked as she might be, she instantly acted and disappeared in a time rift, leaving Mira behind. She knew that there was nothing she could do against Broly. The spot where she just floated in was enveloped by a giant key wave right after she had disappeared. Broly's attack missed her with just a hair width. Tisage, seems like your partner has abandoned you. He looked at Mira who stared back indifferently. GRH egg. RHH, Myra's air pipe was being squeezed tightly, only able to let out some noises. Broly saw Myra's hatred in his eyes. To be honest, I could have defeated you even suppressed, but it would have taken too long and then Kronoa would have interfered. Honestly, you are a greater disappointment than I thought. Broly grinned as he saw Mira even more infuriated. He put two fingers on Myra's forehead. As soon as he did, a dark purple spark made him retract his hands. Too bad I can't control him. If he absorbs Tawa, he would be pretty strong. He dismissed these thoughts and again focused on Mira, who was struggling to get free. Did you really think that Tawa could have escaped if I wanted her dead? You know, Broly paused slightly, seeing slight anxiousness creeping into Myra's eyes. I can follow her through time. After saying that, Broly threw Mira into the air, before thrusting out both his arms, sending a gigantic key wave at him. No! Mira agonizing scream sounded out as he was completely disintegrated. After killing Mira, Broly shot two invisible key blasts at Cell and Gohan, who were struggling for supremacy, knocking them out ice cold at the same time. He saw how Aes and Taro were still struggling with 17 and 18, but he didn't help them. He knew that, after recovering some more, they would be able to handle them. Broly looked at the spot Tawa had just disappeared from. He could see the messy space and time. Something had forced itself through it. Obviously, it was Tawa and just as he thought, she hadn't time to clean things up. For someone like him, who could see space and time, her tracks were as clear as day. Broly pushed his key to its maximum. He even burned his life force to further his power, bending the space a few tens of meters around him. As soon as space around him was pushed away, he approached the spot Tawa has vanished from. The messy space around him was pushed away and a slowly closing purple tear in the very fabric of the universe revealed itself. Broly knew that this had to be the passageway Tawa used to escape. Without hesitation he released tremendous amount of key, mental and magic power and pushed it all into the tear in form of a beam. With the new energy, the tear started growing again and small streams deviated from it. it. Started to look like glass being cracked. He knew he wasn't as precise as Tawa in traveling through time, so he had to use brute force. If Tawa used a scalpel to open up a tear, Broly used a sledgehammer. After the tear grew enough, he immediately flew inside it. As soon as he passed through the entrance, he saw an absolute tangle of space and time threads. He was immediately bombarded with information that it almost fried his brain. He immediately retracted his senses to a point where it was reasonable. Only 10 meters around him was perceivable by him. Anything further would cause a headache. Fortunately, he noticed an area in front of him that wasn't as tightly packed as everything around it. The area led deeper into this whole mess, forming a sort of passage. Without any other options, he directly flew towards it. The space that used to be bend in a few tens of meters in his periphery was reduced to a couple of centimeters. Good thing was that it didn't matter how much he bent as long as it covered his whole body. He knew that if he touched on of this thread, it would either rip that body part off or send him to an unknown timeline. Either way, he wouldn't try to find it out. He bulldozed his way through this messy place and shortly arrived at the area he had seen before. Afterwards he was like a fish in the water. His speed accelerated ridiculously. After a while he saw another tear and without waiting any longer, he flew directly into it. After a bright flash, he appeared on a devastated planet. He landed on the ground and started looking around. Broly couldn't tell on what planet he was, but he sure knew that nothing could survive on it. 
The rocky ground was a wasteland, completely devoid of life. The waters in the rivers looked toxic and even the red sky seemed depressive. This planet wasn't something Broly would stay long on if it wasn't necessary. Well, he wasn't here for vacation to begin with. He didn't bother with that anymore and directly spread out his senses. It didn't take him long to spread it to a large area until he noticed a familiar signature. He got you, he exclaimed and directly turned into a light beam. Instantly arriving just a few hundred meters away, he saw Tawa with three other figures discussing something on the ground. He looked at the three, Slug, Tulls and Bardock with a mask on that covered his whole face. Of course, he only knew that it was Bardock since he played the Xenoverse games and his hair was kind of dead giveaway. He noticed that Slug and Tulls are very weak. It seemed like they still hadn't any power-ups. But Broly didn't really care if they did. They would still be no match against him. The only ones who may be a bit more troublesome and fun would be Cooler and another version of himself. Tawa was shocked seeing Broly. She had escaped through space and time to another whole reality. How was it possible for Broly to be here? It was clearly not any version of Broly, but it was the one she had fled from just now. Tals was shocked as well. He had heard from Tawa about the legendary Super Scion and his primal instincts were warning him about the threat that Broly posed. Bardock was completely unaffected since he was under Tawa's control. While Tawa and Tulls were thinking about ways to get away, Slug steps forwards. So, you are Broly? Not as impressive as I thought. Broly raised an eyebrow in surprise. He couldn't believe how someone was so incapable of sensing the gap between them. Maybe he didn't want to see the truth? The others looked shocked as well. Was Slug suicidal? You know, if you hadn't talked you might have lived a bit longer. Broly waved his hand and the next instant Slug's body exploded. Bits of meat flew around and sullied Tawa's group who were still frozen in fear. There was no grand, devastating explosion or huge waves of ki. It was like Slug's body decided on its own to explode. Well, that was a short as cameo. After getting rid of Slug, he turned to Tulls. Shivers were sent down Tulls' spine after being looked at by Broly. He could tell from the look Broly gave him. His eyes showed a cold indifference like he was looking at a soon-to-be-dead man. Broly slowly walked towards them. Please, Lord Broly, I can be of great use. I have information about a Frui Dash. Before he could finish his sentence, a red light beam pierced his forehead. A perfect hole was being burned through his head. His eyes were wide open from shock. His body lost strength and collapsed to the ground, never to move again. With a wave of his hand, Broly sent out a bit of key, cremating Tull's body. His ashes flew away with the wind. He couldn't just explode him like he did with Slug. What if some body parts touched him? Now Broly stood just a meter away from Tawa, who was trembling all over. Suddenly Bardock on the side started moving but as soon as he did, the mask on his face split in two. The red eyes of Bardock suddenly turned black as he seemed to have regained his conscious. Bardock looked shocked and observed his hands as he closed and opened them. He had finally regained the control of his body. He turned towards Tawa and a fierce glint appeared in his eyes. Before he could make a move, his suddenly body slid over the ground, creating a distance of dozens of meters between him and Tawa. He was surprised by what was happening. He wanted to say something but a key barrier suddenly formed around Tawa and Broly, entrapping the two. Bardock was left standing outside. Without a chance of looking at what was happening inside the barrier, Bardock decided to wait. There was nothing he could do anyway. Now we are undisturbed Tawa. Broly grinned maliciously as he let his eyes wander over her body. You. I see. If, if it is my body you want, I am willing to dash thinking that she understood what he was here for and why he shielded the two of them from the outside world. She let her guard down for a second. Before she could register what happened, Broly's hand landed on her forehead. Broly knew that he couldn't control her like he was unable with Mira, but he still was confident in taking her knowledge. He directly dazed her with a soul attack and began to read her mind. Reading minds was quite easy if someone was willing to have one's mind read or if the person was incredibly less powerful than the mind reader. To read Tawa's mind, however, was more than just difficult. She was after all a great magician. He also didn't just want to have bits of her memories, he wanted all of it. He continued to bombard her soul with attacks while he was going through her memories. This would take a while, but that was also why he had allowed Tawa to escape. Tawa would surely take a place she was familiar with, away from anyone's attention, so why not let her lead him there? Even if he decided not to use that knowledge, who knew if Kronoa doesn't mention it to Beerus and get him erased? Maybe she would blackmail him to do her bidding like she did with Trunks. After all, 
She can't let someone with this kind of capabilities and his reputation wander around. Broly was determined to prevent that from happening. But he also wouldn't let this possibility slide, to know how to freely travel through time itself, without time rings or time machines. Even if he met a powerful foe in the future, his abilities in escaping would rise to whole new level. Maybe with more knowledge of how space and time works, he could even integrate it into his attacks. Possibly, he would be unaffected by time manipulative abilities like that of Goldo or Hit. There were just too many possible applications that he couldn't ignore. Half an hour later, Broly was still absorbing her memories. He didn't realize that her eyes had already rolled back into her head and her mouth started foaming. He also didn't notice that the resistance of her soul had already weakened considerably. Even if he didn't attack her soul, she wouldn't be able to resist his forceful memory search. After two more hours, her eyes, mouth and ears were already bleeding, and her soul couldn't pick up any resistance. Fortunately or unfortunately, he was done absorbing and finally let go of her forehead. Her body that was stiff the whole time, collapsed the moment Broly let go of her. Broly had closed his eyes, trying to give the memories he just had obtained, some order. Meanwhile, his key barrier around him had splintered away into the sky and Bardock was able to see the two again. Bardock looked at Broly, who had reverted back to his base and had a satisfied smile on his face, and Tawa, who was bleeding out of her orifices. He went up to the two and took a closer look at Tawa. Tawa seemed to have noticed his approach. Her eyelids trembled, and she was barely able to open her mouth. He, me. Bardock squinted as he tried to understand what she was trying to convey. He yelled me. After Bardock listened to what she said, he snorted and held his palm up. He suddenly transformed into a super scion and a key ball started forming in his hand. Without hesitation, he threw the attack at the defenseless Tawa. She was so exhausted, she couldn't even scream as she was incinerated into nothingness. After killing Tawa, he had realized that Broly had opened his eyes and was staring at him. That was not nice. Bardock looked at the slightly smiling Broly. I knew what she wanted to do. She is better off dead. Otherwise my son would never be left alone by her. Indeed, she hated science. Additionally, she is a master at mind controlling and if I can't control her, she would only be a ticking time bomb. Still, what a shame. Bardock raised an eyebrow, observing Broly's lamenting expression. True. She was an accomplished magician and a great scientist. Bardock thought that this Broly seemed to have great foresight. If she were on their side, she would make a powerful ally. HM? Ah yeah, that too. But man, she was hot. Bardock frowned at that comment and took every compliment back. He thought about just now. Broly threw in a healing capsule and started speaking to Bardock, while he was recovering his lost energy. That reminds me. Bardock, are you a scientist? Bardock was surprised at that sudden question. Me a scientist? Do I look like that? Bardock retorted sarcastically. Not really. Do you have a red headband? Now Bardock frowned again as he remembered all that happened before Frisia blew up the planet. Surprisingly, Broly wanted to know what happened to him. Bardock didn't know the reason why he wanted to know all about the betrayal, but he complied. After all, he had saved him from these two demons. He also told him everything about the time he had spent being controlled. Wait, so they had already met another version of me but were unable to control him because they were too weak? Yeah. That was why they went to the Cell Games to get some energy for Mira, so he could subdue that Broly. Hmm. It is a bit different. We should go and destroy their demon army that they had gathered and kill their leader, Bardock said. He was determined to eradicate this demon threat. Leader? Yes, he is much more powerful than Mira or Tawa and is the real one giving the orders. We have to get to him and... Broly ignored what Bardock was saying afterwards and started going through Tawa's memories. He skipped through the things he already knew, like the fact that her main reason for changing the timeline was to take revenge on Earth's science and Bu for killing her brother, Debura, and then revive him. Her aim to unseal the demon realm was indeed in order, but he couldn't tell from whom. Bardock almost started screaming as he saw Broly ignore him. A vein started bulging on Broly's forehead. Shut up, Broly said coldly, instantly making Bardock quiet. He continued going through the memories and quickly found what he was looking for. Unfortunately, the part concerning their leader was blurry, and he couldn't tell who it was. Broly himself could only think of the demon god, Demigra, but since anything Dragon Ball seemed to be included, it wouldn't be surprising if it was someone else. After making sure he got it right, he spoke to Bardock. All right, I have localized that realm. I should be able to bring us there. After saying that, 
He grabbed the surprised Bardock and slashed open a rift in space and immediately flew in. Unlike before, he didn't need to enter that messy space but had a safe passageway towards the location he wanted to go. He didn't need to waste energy protecting the two, and only needed to use a bit of magic to get where he wanted. Concluding from the memories of Tawa, he suspected that every thread in that space he was before represented another timeline. With the knowledge of the series, he thought there would only be some timelines, which numbers could be determined by the time rings. Now, however, he assumed that these rings only allow safe passage to timelines that are somewhat connected to the ones one was in. The rifts he created just now as well uses the threads to travel to a timeline that is already connected with the timeline he was currently in. So, what Broly did before wasn't something remotely close to what time rings or Tawa used. He had traveled outside a thread outside time. In fact, if he had touched another thread, he would probably be in another timeline that was completely different than the one he was in. He wouldn't even be able to return if it wasn't connected with his. In fact, if he hadn't flown to the area that was less packed and found the other end of Tawa's passage, he would have been lost there forever with no hope of being able to return. Fortunately, he now was able to travel safely. Even bringing someone along was easy. He also thought about the concept of the time machines, were they connecting to another time thread? Did they create another thread or maybe something different? Without being able to think about it further, they arrived on the other side. His whole vision was filled with endless barren land, not very different from the planet he was before. The ground was dry and devoid of any life. There was no water in sight. Broly and Bardock looked around and saw a weird plant-like construct in the distance, holding up two huge round surfaces. Suddenly a giant black dragon materialized out of nowhere and was now floating above one of the surfaces, looking down at it. He looked like a dark, demonic version of Shenlong. Now that he took a closer look, he saw thousands of little dots that moved around the plant. Those were figures in uniforms. Through the memories, he somewhat had an idea that those were soldiers and that there should be some of them who were incredibly strong. Broly and Bardock quickly made their way towards the dragon. They guessed that the leader of the demon army should be there. Boom! Suddenly a frightening explosion swallowed many soldiers, pulverizing them in an instant. Another explosion followed immediately and Broly was finally able to see what was happening. He couldn't hide the shock on his face as he looked at the incredible fast-moving figures fighting each other. One side was heading towards Dark Shenlong and the other were intercepting them. The intercepting side was outnumbered and were slowly but surely being overpowered. What was shocking for Broly was that the side pushing towards Dark Shenlong were actually Earth Scions. To be more precise, Broly saw Goku and Vegeta in their Super Scion 4 form and adult Gotenks. With them were Kronoa, the Supreme Kai of Time and another dude with red hair. Broly had no idea who that was but that guy felt like the soldiers and the others that were intercepting them. They felt like Mira and Tawa. They were clearly from the demon race. He didn't know why one of them was helping the Scions and he didn't care. He was only here to kill the demon leader. He didn't bother with the other Scions but headed straight for the Dark Shenlong. The demon race didn't seem to have expected him to be here and weren't able to react fast enough to intercept him. Not that any of the normal soldiers stood a chance. Broly and Bardock suddenly heard the Dark Shenlong speak out. You, who have gathered the seven Dark Dragon Balls. Broly didn't wait any longer and transformed into the ascended legendary Super Scion. But he didn't stop there. His muscles all over his body tensed up. Veins leading to his eyes bulged and his eye color started slowly turned yellow. With a key burst his energy swept all the approaching soldiers away. Without flying closer, Broly's key surged and Thunder Spears kept appearing behind him, pointing directly at Dark Shenlong. Unlimited Thunder Spears. As soon as his voice fell, hundreds of Thunder Spears shot through the air and headed towards Dark Shenlong. The demons that were intercepting Earth Scions were shocked as they looked back, seeing a rain of spears heading for the dragon. Every single Thunder Spear created a light beam in its path as they closed the distance with terrifying speed. Just before a leading spear reached its target, it shattered into thousand pieces heading into every direction. It looked like a spear, made out of glass, was hitting a rock. At the impact area, a big curved barrier could be seen, shielding the dragon. Broly frowned slightly seeing this, but his eyebrows quickly eased up as it turned into a sneer. Broly swung his arms, making a cross in front of his face. Suddenly, the Thunder Spears behind him seemed to have formed two groups as they headed to the respectively other side in lightning speed, making a curve as they shot to the dragon. The spears now flew in an arc, attacking the dragon from the sides, while Broly raised an arm with his palm facing the dragon. In the next moment, 
a key sphere formed in front of his palm, before it burst open and transformed into a volley of key blast. Like a machine gun, he fired dozens of key blasts in a second straight at the dragon, while his spears were attacking the dragon from the sides. Broly heard a snort as a giant barrier formed around the dragon, encasing it completely. Broly's attacks seemed to have no effect, as his spears shattered and his key blasts exploded immediately on impact without leaving as much as a scratch on it. Broly suddenly felt danger and sensed a compressed magic blast heading his way from the round stage-like surface. He immediately stopped firing his key blasts and dodged in a wide arc. The magic sphere unexpectedly followed him, and he quickly found out that more magic blasts were heading towards him at frightening speed. He directly burned his life force, enabling him to escape for longer while blindly shooting some key blast onto the stage. He made his way towards the dragon while fleeing from the attacks. The dragon had already finished his greetings and was now waiting for the wish to be made. Broly grinned as he saw the several magic blasts almost reaching him as he flew straight towards the dragon. Surprisingly, he closed his eyes for a second and directly disappeared from the spot, while the magic blasts continued on after losing their target. The magic blast directly landed on the barrier. A giant crack appeared on the barrier, but it was immediately trying to heal itself. The crack slowly mended itself, but a shout seemed to announce its doom. Gamma Ray burst. Suddenly not far away from the explosion, caused by the magic blasts, a green beam of destruction shot at lightning speed to the slowly mending crack. In an instant, the beam arrived at the crack. It was stopped for an instant before it pierced through it, heading straight for the dragon. New! An old voice sounded out from the surface. Only now Broly saw who had fired those magic blasts at him. He looked like a very aged member of the demon race. Pale blue skin and white hair with black eyes and red irises staring furiously at Broly. His outfit and the white and yellow staff screamed sorcerer. Broly didn't bother with him anymore and looked back at the dragon who was impaled by his green beam or this is what he thought, no what everyone thought. The green beam was stopped by the dark scale of the dragon. The dragon turned towards Broly and stared at him with its red eyes. Broly's beam faded away without leaving a single scratch on the dragon. The dragon started speaking again, seemingly towards Broly. State your wish. I won't wait for much longer. Its voice boomed throughout the realm, stunning Broly for a second. I wish for you to open the seal as much as you can. Broly stated his wish as fast as he could after regaining his bearings. The curse that affected all scions can't be broken completely but only indirectly open slightly with hard work and dedication. As long as the seal opened up more, Broly would have more access to the power that was sealed away and was slumbering deep inside him. He would only grow more powerful. He didn't ask for the dragon to increase his power directly, as the dragon would forcefully increase his capabilities. This of course would also loosen the seal indirectly, but why do that if he could just tackle the source? Besides, to have his capabilities forcefully increased like that would usually be harmful, so this was the best option for him. As you wish, this will take some time as I have to use all my power, Dark Shenlong said. Afterwards his eyes started glowing red and his body started glowing. Broly could instantly feel the changes happening. His soul, energies and body seemed to lose the weight hindering its advancement. His body cells started evolving to a higher realm. His energies were increasingly surging out, filling up his body. His mind became clearer with the second. If Broly needed to do dozens of arduously training sessions and meditations to become stronger, he now only needed a single spar to reach the same result. While Broly was relishing in the feeling, a certain demon was staring at him with hateful eyes. You bastard! Die! The demon raised his staff, pointing it at Broly. A red beam shot through the air. The scorching heat it released was deforming the space and light around it. Broly sensed the danger, but it was already too late for him to doge. He urged his powers to form a thick barrier around him. Unexpectedly, the barrier was directly pierced by the beam like it was paper. Broly couldn't dodge, he could only slightly turn his body. Broly's body trembled. He touched his chest and felt the warm liquid on his hand. He looked at his trembling hand that was red from his blood. In the next moment, his body became limp and fell towards the surface. Broly heavily landed on the ground, destroying the stone on impact. A small smoke screen was formed, slightly covering Broly's lying body. You piece of trash of a scion. I was so close to regaining my youth. The demon started cursing at the motionless body of Broly and slowly levitated towards him. Suddenly the demon looked up with a frown on his face before he quickly turned his head again as if he had realized something. 
He looked back towards Broly's body, but what instead greeted him was a palm pushing a small key sphere towards his face. In the corner of his eyes, the demon saw Broly to his side, grinning back at him while thrusting his palm in his face. Eraser blow. As soon as his key sphere touched the demon's face, the sphere exploded and immediately enveloped the two. An instant later, a figure was thrown out of the explosion. Unexpectedly, this figure was Broly. His whole chest was bleeding profusely, but Broly didn't seem to be affected as he instantly regained his balance in the air and landed calmly on the ground. Broly threw in a healing capsule. His chest was trembling, and something seemed to wriggle under his skin. A second later the wound was closing already. Having his seal open continuously, placed his being into an imbalance. There was so much room for improvements that his body was practically screaming for exercise and Zenkai boosts. Although he had suffered a severe injury just now, he didn't even flinch. The pain was completely overshadowed with the feeling of his enhanced strength. He was currently high on the feeling of getting stronger. His body badly wants to exercise and now a demon sorcerer that could one-shot his old self presented himself. But Broly wasn't scared, he was so excited, he couldn't help but tremble all over. The demon slowly stepped out of the explosion as he looked hatefully at Broly. I see you probably have a lot of this medicine. The demon eyed at the little bag attached to Broly's waist. The demon smiled maliciously before continuing. Oh, I will make you suffer so much that you hoped you were never born. Broly gestured him with his hand to come at him with a sneer on his face. Try me, bitch. You will regret pissing me, Mechikabura. Off. Mechikabura raised his arm. His fingers, formed to a claw, started glowing. Every finger then released a purple lightning connecting with the respectively other beam, forming a small ball of lightning in the middle. Broly wasn't inactive. While Mechikabura was preparing his attack, Broly shot key blasts at him, but to no avail. His attacks were easily blocked by a barrier. Humph child's play. Mechikabura snorted and fired off his attack. Multiple beams branched out of the ball and headed towards Broly from all sides. Broly decisively decided to dodge. Although he wanted to get some Zenkai boosts if he was getting instantly killed, he wouldn't be able to regret his decision. Broly ducked under and jumped over a few attacks coming his way. While he was sprinting in an arc Broly didn't run aimlessly, he wanted to close in on Mechikabura. That demon was a strong magician, but Broly had already noticed that he was definitely weaker in close combat. He dodged the attacks, but unfortunately for him, these beams were like homing missiles, following his every move. Furthermore, these beams were even faster than him. Even after he had dodged some of them, they would quickly catch up on him again. Just as he was about to reach the demon, a beam would disrupt his plans, making him distance himself again. Broly shot some key blasts at the beams, but his blasts were easily dodged by the beams. Still on the ground, they created explosion after explosion. Broly immediately benefited from this, hiding in the smokescreen just to jump out of it again on another side, firing at Mechikabura. Of course, Mechikabura wouldn't just stand there and let himself hit. He easily dodged the surprise attacks from Broly. Broly squinted seeing this. Obviously, he knew that those simple sneak attacks wouldn't be a threat for Mechikabura, but it still let him see the reaction time of that demon. He watched every move of the demon while dodging all the attacks. His ability to sense the surrounding was showing his advantages now. Mechikabura didn't know of his abilities and was surprised that even after a few seconds no attacks seemed to reach Broly, even if they were coming from a dead angle. Hmph, <laughs> you are certainly good at running away, but I hope you don't expect this to be the limits of my capabilities. You don't have to keep up that front, old man. Sit down and relax. I don't want you to have a heart attack. Broly shouted as he skillfully dodged the attacks. You bastard. Mechikabura immediately sent out more beams. The beams gathered in the sky and quickly accumulated. The beams, densely packed, blocked out the whole sky and then shot towards Broly from all sides. An attack impossible to dodge. Broly smiled bitterly as he saw the attack. Although the attacks left him no room to dodge, there was no way for Mechikabura to control the beams as accurately as before. Broly's key and magic power instantly surged out. Unlimited Thunder Spears. His energy created dozens of Thunder Spears in an instant and shot to the sky, meeting Mechikabura's attack. Every spear was made out of highly compressed energy, but even those spears were only able to neutralize one beam respectively. It was one of his best techniques to deal with numerous opponents, but it still couldn't contend against the demon's attack. Mechikabura seemed to be able to easily create more of these beams, 
while Broly was giving his all to barely create the same amount. Expectedly, Mechikabura quickly overpowered Broly's spears. But, Broly, after hearing the sizzling sound coming from the ground, felt a piercing pain in his left lower leg. He grabbed into his bag at his waist, pulling out a healing capsule. But, suddenly another beam found a gap in his counterattack and from behind directly pierced through his right kneecap. Broly gritted his teeth as he felt his kneecap shattered. He quickly threw in the healing capsule, while he urged his energy to create more spears. He directed a few at Mechikabura to get him distracted for a second, possible giving him a second to breath. Unfortunately for Broly, Mechikabura's attacks were made leisurely, and he had enough concentration to dodge his attacks without ceasing to attack him. Contrasting to his intention, it opened up gaps in Broly's attack and let more beams through. Another one pierced through his shoulder, leaving a large gaping hole in it. His armor didn't provide any resistance in front of these attacks. A burning sensation came from his shoulder. His arm immediately lost any feeling and fell limb. He couldn't keep his hand closed. A healing capsule he had already grabbed fell to the ground. He directly reached into a side pocket in his armor with his other hand and pulled out a senzu bean. He directly threw it in his mouth. Strangle his body didn't seem to heal. Another two beam broke through and directly burned a hole through his chest and in his waist. Mechikabura was ecstatic. Seeing the through pain distorted expression on Broly, filled his demonic heart with joy. Without stopping, he sent out more beams. More and more beams penetrated Broly's body. He had numerous holes all over his body, bleeding profusely. There were too many holes in his legs that they couldn't support him anymore. Bones could be seen on his arms as his flesh was burned off by the scorching heat. The beam emitted. He seemed to be close to dying as his body was losing too much blood. His conscience was blurry. His attacks had already ceased as well as Mechikabura's. Mechikabura slowly floated towards Broly. He didn't finish him yet. Mechikabura knew that this scion still had more healing capsules and therefore could be toyed more with. He was already told that the Dark Dragon Balls would be available in another year. For making him Mechikabura the strongest demon in history, wait, he would make Broly suffer until he gets his wish. Mechikabura was only a few meters away and wanting to force Broly to eat another healing capsule. Before he could do so, his attention was distracted by a deep, booming voice. Your wish has been granted. Mechikabura looked up to the dragon, who was saying his goodbyes. The dragon started to glow before disappearing. The dark dragon balls then scattered through the timelines. Crunch. Mechikabura suddenly heard a crunching sound coming from Broly, as if he was chewing on something. In the next second, Broly's lying body directly shot up. His body straight as an arrow as if his previous condition wasn't real. His body was healed at a visible rate and only after second, he was completely healed. A fierce glint appeared in Broly's eyes and his body was oozing out with killing intent. Oh, you already ate one? He. Good. Now I don't have to do it. Mechikabura extended a finger, pointing at Broly. A red deadly beam shot out, heading straight for Broly's chest. Broly extended his arm and his palm was instantly covered with green and bluish flames, representing his key and his magic power. He blocked the attack with his palm, and it started smoking shortly afterwards. This, Mechikabura was stunned. A moment ago, Broly wasn't even remotely able to block it and was directly impaled. But now he blocked it? What kind of concept was this? Suddenly veins started to bulge in Broly's face. Tremendous amount of key surged out, sweeping everything away. Mechikabura frowned slightly as his cape was fluttering in the wind. He shot another beam at Broly but was directly blocked by the key around it. Every muscle fiber inside Broly's body was tensing up as his key rose to a completely new level. The whole structure they were standing on and the plant supporting it started trembling from the energy output. The air and space started to distort as it was shaking. Lightning suddenly brightened up the world. Thunder boomed throughout the demon realm. The plant and the surface they were standing on broke down from the trembles and heavily fell to the ground. The whole structure was falling down directly onto a city below it. Buildings, boulders, everything started to break apart from the energy. Broly was clenching his fist as he urged all his scion power inside his body to burst out, delivering him with enough power to go beyond an ascended super scion. His hair was glowing brightly. Suddenly his hair started growing to a degree that it was visible to the naked eye. His hair extended all the way down to his lower back. Warg! Lightning arcs shot out from his body. With a burst, a shockwave rippled through the air, destroying everything in its path. The 
The key slowly settled and the surroundings seemed to have stopped shaking. The world calmed down again. Even the explosions from the fights between Earth Science and the demons had stopped for a second. Before continuing, only Mechikabura and Broly remained hovering in the air where the stage was just now. Mechikabura and Broly's eyes met. Mechikabura could see the confidence Broly was exuding. Humph, <laughs> what a joke. You think you can beat me now? Look around you. It is obvious that you just achieved this form and have no idea how to use that strength. Even if you did, do you really think this measly amount of strength will be enough to defeat me? Broly only stared back silently before a grin formed on his face. You, I have even subdued another version of you, who had reached an even higher form. Do you dash? Why are you talking so much, Grandpa? Mechikabura wanted to retort, but he himself felt it was unlike him to talk so much. He suddenly noticed a bit of cold sweat running down his back. I am afraid? Bullshit. I am clearly stronger than him. Mechikabura's thoughts were running wild. His face suddenly distorted in anger and for the first time pointed his staff at Broly. He didn't play around anymore, he was gonna kill this scion right now. Combust! Magic power was gathering in his staff in an instant and directly burst out in a gigantic scorching red beam, enveloping Broly immediately. His beam covered the area for a moment before dimming again. Mechikabura frowned because nothing was there. If it was a lowly soldier, he would assume that he was pulverized but Broly? His senses suddenly screamed out and he directly turned around. Just in time, he saw Broly leaning towards him with his arm bent and his fist pointing towards him. He directly created barrier between them. Broly's key wasn't noticeable but Mechikabura saw how Broly's fist glowing slightly. Mechikabura instincts screamed to dodge this attack. Kakis fist style. Broly's arm didn't seem to move at all. Without warning Mechikabura's barrier suddenly shattered. Mechikabura felt like he was hit by a meteor. His body was tearing through the air as he was sent flying. His body shot through a mountain peak without any sign of stopping. It looked like he was about to travel across the whole demon realm. His head felt dizzy the moment he was hit, but after a while he regained his bearing and slowed himself. After coming to a stop, he looked down his body and saw several fist-sized holes in his clothes. His pale blue skin showed several bruises. Mechikabura's face distorted in anger as he thought about how this lowly scion was able to hurt him. Whoosh! He was on high alert and directly recognized the sound of wind behind him. He directly spun around and pointed his staff in that direction. A red triangular shield quickly formed on the tip of his staff. Mechikabura saw Broly staring at him from behind the shield with his hands still glowing slightly. Boom! Mechikabura felt himself being pushed away slightly. The shield trembled slightly under the explosion like impact. Crack. Right in the middle a large crack formed on the shield. Nothing seemed to follow up afterwards and the crack mended itself. However this only made Mechikabura more nervous. Boom. 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 In an instant numerous cracks formed on the shield. Mechikabura clearly felt his shield being hit hundreds of times in a single instant. As if to prove his unease, the shield splintered from the middle into thousands of pieces. A hand directly reached through the shield, grasping the tip of the staff. Before Mechikabura could retaliate or distance himself, the hand put pressure on the tip and directly broke it off. As soon as the staff broke, purple-red lightning shot out at Mechikabura and Broly, following with the staff imploding, seemingly vanishing into nothingness. Mechikabura was shocked. His precious staff was easily destroyed. How could this be? Impossible. You are obviously not strong enough to break it, I can sense it. How could Dash? Broly didn't wait for Mechikabura to finish and directly punched him in the face. Mechikabura couldn't dodge at all. Although he was powerful, his expertise wasn't close combat. Especially, his hand-to-hand -hand combat was subpar. Facing someone who was only closing in on his strength made him look completely inexperienced. Broly didn't give him any chance to rest and directly pummeled him into the ground. He released a relentless wave of strikes, hitting Mechikabura all over his defenseless body. You bastard! With an outburst of magic power, a red sphere made from lightning covered Mechikabura. Broly struck it once and immediately felt his hand going numb. A lightning arc shot at him from the sphere. Broly directly dodged it by jumping backwards. Mechikabura had some blood tickling down his mouth and was panting slightly. Clearly the hits had made some impact, but it was not nearly enough to bring him down. Fortunately for Broly, Mechikabura's staff was already broken, reducing his strength. Broly squinted his eyes slightly before putting his arms to his side with his palms facing upwards. 
They were positioned slightly higher than his head, and with a swoosh sound, two green vibrating discs appeared above his palms. Broly swung his arms, sending the discs right at Mechikabura. Mechikabura put both his arms forwards and shot out two beams, directly destroying the discs before they could reach his protective sphere. Mechikabura view was blocked by the explosion. He suddenly sensed something and quickly looked upwards only to see Broly with his hands cupped and a small sphere in the middle, pointing towards him. The veins on his arms and face was bulging, threatening to explode. Gamma Ray burst. There were only a few meters between them. There was no way for Mechikabura to dodge this attack. The lightning fast speed of the attack didn't allow him to put any extra protection as well. He only increased the magical output into his sphere, hoping it would last. The sphere was instantly enveloped in a grand pillar of green light, pushing the sphere to the ground. The ground directly gave in like it was tofu as soon as the sphere hit the ground. Mechikabura felt the impact as he was being pushed deep into the ground. He put his arms upwards and released his magic power in order to resist longer. His sphere was flickering and bending inwards under the intense pressure. He knew the moment his sphere broke, he would be heavily injured. Mechikabura felt like the beam lasted for eons as he pushed everything into the sphere to hold on. But still more and more cracks formed at the front that was enduring the full brunt of the attack. Fortunately for him, the beam didn't last as long as he felt it was. After a few seconds the beam dimmed until it disappeared altogether. Mechikabura's body was drained of much power, but he was still confident in winning this fight. He had already noticed that although Broly was nowhere near his powers normally, his strength rose by an inconceivable amount with some kind of technique. He had never seen this technique before, but he could tell as soon as Broly used it, not only was his energy usage perfect without any loss, but every attack seemed to have a property to push everything else away. Space and time couldn't touch his fists, making every attack incredible fast and destructive. Even his counterpart, who was even stronger than him, would be at his mercy with those attacks. Mechikabura knew that if Broly mastered this technique further and not only use it on his fists, he would have no problem fighting someone, who would be normally out of his reach. He would be unrivaled on the same level. Mechikabura knew that he couldn't let Broly live. He would grow too powerful if he developed further. Decisively, he shot towards the pinpoint-sized light. He was deep in the ground, but with his powers, he crossed the distance in a second. He flew into the sky, searched for Broly, and quickly found him. Broly, back in his base, was standing on the ground with his arms in front of him. His body was giving off smoke and he was breathing heavily. Everyone would be able to see that his body was already on its limits. He held a senza bean in his hands and was trying to eat it, but he couldn't raise his arms. His key and magic power was drained. His life force burned and his soul felt like it was about to fall apart. If he couldn't eat the senza bean, he wouldn't even be able to defeat a child. Broly couldn't even sense his surroundings and didn't notice that he was detected by Mechikabura. He wasn't even sure if the demon survived, let alone come back in a second. Broly was panting heavily as he felt all the damage in his body. Legendary Super Scion 3 was to pull out all the Scion power in every cell, boosting one's capabilities, but the sudden increase was too much for his body to handle, and the cells burst open. Even though his cells were strengthened to some degree through the wish, it was still too much to go all out all of a sudden. If he had slowly adapted to the form, he wouldn't have that problem, but now it was already too late to complain. Kaka's fist style was problematic as well. It not only put a huge burden on the body but on his soul as well as it is the main source of power for it. He would have probably died if his soul wasn't strengthened by the origin spirit crystal. He was still too clumsy with it. He was like a child wielding a sledgehammer. He thought he could use it to quickly end Mechikabura, but who would have thought that Mechikabura was on a completely different level and could last that long? Have you said your last words? A voice came from above Broly and slowly two feet with a burned cape landed in front of Broly. Broly struggled to raise his head and saw Mechikabura. He didn't die. Broly couldn't believe it. He had put everything on that last attack, but Mechikabura seemed barely hurt. Broly gritted his teeth only able to clench his fingers slightly. Mechikabura was laughing maliciously and his eyes were filled with hatred. Broly, I will make you pay back a million Tim Dash. Suddenly a red blur came into view kicking Mechikabura away. Broly was stunned as he looked at the figure. Nice work, Broly. I will take over from here on. Haha. <laughs> a voice that seemed overlapped answered him before dashing after Mechikabura. Gogeta Super Scion 4. The key he was giving off is unreal. Good that he takes on Mechikabura for me. Still could have fed me the Senzu bean. Suddenly another figure appeared. 
Don't worry my dad got this. Goteng stopped in front of him, shortly said that and ran off again. Hey, Broly said weakly. Gotenks luckily heard him, stopped before running backwards to Broly again. Need something? Broly only twitched slightly with his hand, showing Gotenks the Senzu bean. Oh, I see. He took the Senzu bean. Here comes the plane. Broly only silently ate the bean, while coldly eyeing Gotenks grinning face. So humiliating. I am definitely going to beat you up. Broly felt his body being healed almost instantaneously. His soul, however, was hardly affected. Of course, a healthy body helped his soul to stabilize, since his body and soul are dependent on each other, but he still felt like his head was splitting apart. The Senza Bean was able to heal the cells in his body and bring his key back to near 100%, but it didn't really affect his additional life force, magic power, or his soul. He would need some time to replenish his life force and his magic power, but that wasn't really a problem. To heal his soul, he would need much time of rest and meditation as well. Maybe he could use the power of the origin spirit crystals to accelerate the healing process. In the meantime, he probably shouldn't use any soul-based techniques for a while, but he didn't really rely in fights on those anyway. The only soul technique that was useful in battles was Kakis fighting style. In fact, he had gained some insights in the fight just now. Before this fight, he just relied on getting the feeling similar to when Kakis fought in his body. Now he somewhat understood how it actually worked. He just needed to use his soul to feel every strand, every sparkle of energy inside the body part he wanted to use the technique on. He then needed to actively control and infuse his soul with every bit of energy with every move he made. With this, his energy would be used up perfectly without any loss. Still, he was a bit confused. Although this could help him use everything he had to the maximum, it didn't explain why his strength rose so dramatically. He should have only be able to jump one or two levels, but this demon was far above him, he may have even reached the level of gods. With his vision he could tell that space and time was pushed away from his fists, but he didn't know why it made such a big difference. From what he knew, immense power could distort, push or even rip apart space and time but why was he so much more powerful with that technique? Had it something to do with his soul? Maybe he missed something. He would probably only be able to figure out why his strength increases that ridiculously if he mastered this technique. There was also the question about why he was able to use his soul in that way at all. Normally when he uses soul-based techniques, he never really used his soul itself but mental energy, which comes from the soul. Basically, the soul was the core, the source, and he just uses the energy it produced. It may be because of the origin spirit crystal that he was able to use his soul directly. Broly couldn't help but frown. He wasn't sure if it was a good thing that he was using the source of his being, even if it was able to grant him that much power. He also realized how terrifying Kaka's soul actually was. He was able to contend against gods of destruction with only his legendary Super Scion form as the base and he almost took over his body. Broly felt lucky that Kakis used his key core to place his soul in. If Kakis used his soul center in the middle of his head as the start point, Broly would have been easily taken over. Broly had no clue why Kakis didn't do it, but he also wouldn't figure that out by merely pondering over it. Now he only needed to focus on healing. Although the injury was annoying, it wasn't something too complex to recover from. He either took his time with the healing process or uses another crystal to accelerate the process. On the side note, he felt like his soul will come back stronger than ever. Broly was thinking about his next move until his body was almost blown away from a gust of wind. In front of him stood a grinning figure, who opened his mouth to speak, before his whole body shined brightly. Two figures suddenly were pushed out to the sides out of the light. Gogeta had just defused. Goku and Vegeta were stumbling a few steps before regaining their balance. Goku breathed out in relief and Vegeta crossed his arms while looking as grumpy as ever. Oh man, that Mechi, something was strong, Goku said. Hmph, if you don't think you can handle him then just leave him to me. Vegeta snorted at Goku. They both looked pretty beat. Broly frowned after hearing what Vegeta just said. What do you mean? Did you let him escape? Broly's expression darkened. After we kicked him into a mountain, he disappeared, escaped to another timeline. Broly was speechless. Why did they kick him into a mountain just kill him with a key blast and be done with it? I can't really talk, I tend to play with my opponents as well. Broly took a deep breath in. Then what are you standing here? Search for him and end this farce. You think you can order me around? The prince of all science? A vein on Vegeta's forehead bulged as he heard Broly order him as if he owned the place. You the prince? I don't remember having such an incompetent son. 
Broly grinned as he looked at Vegeta exploding in anger while dashing towards him. Goku quickly held Vegeta back before he could throw a punch. Broly just looked at Vegeta amused as if he didn't see Vegeta trying to attack him. We should all come down, we are all on the same side, right? That reminds me. Broly, didn't you hate me? Goku said while holding Vegeta back. Vegeta was shouting at Goku to let him go. Not because he wanted to attack Broly again, but because he was being awkwardly held by Goku from behind. I think you are talking about another version of me. Do you two want to get a room? A room? Goku was punched by Vegeta in the face. Ow, Vegeta, what was that for? You. All right. Can we come down to business already? Shouldn't we chase after Mechikabura? Well, we don't know how to travel through time. We need Kronoa to help us. As if she heard her name, she, Trunks, Goten, and the red-haired demon flew towards them. Kronoa quickly landed and directly shouted frantically at Goku and Vegeta. Where is he? Where is Mechikabura? Did you kill him? Goku quickly explained to her that he had escaped just a moment ago. Broly raised an eyebrow as he looked at Trunks and Goten. How long was I in thought? Unbeknownst to Broly, Gotenks had tried to talk with him, only to be ignored. They were then attacked by some demons and Gotenks quickly engaged them, while Broly was just standing on the rock ignoring all that. Now they had regathered and looked for Gogeta and Mechikabura. Broly suddenly sensed that he was being looked at. The red-haired demon was observing him. What are you looking at? Broly asked annoyed. You are different, but I can't put my finger on it. The demon said expressionless. Broly frowned. Yeah, don't touch me, I don't swing that way. Goten and Trunks almost fell over, hearing that. Cough. We should think of a way to find Mechikabura. We have to stop whatever he is planning. Trunks quickly brought everyone back on track. Just bring me where he disappeared, and I will be able to follow him, the demon said. Goku and Vegeta quickly led the way. So, Broly, you want to help? Kronoa asked. She saw him follow, but she couldn't understand why he didn't directly attack Goku. Weren't they arch enemies? Broly only gave her a quick glance before answering. I just want to kill him for pissing me off. Besides, I was brought here by Tawa and now need someone to bring me back to my timeline. Kronoa was surprised. Tawa? Where is she? I killed her. Oh, I see. Don't worry. After we stopped Mechikabura, I will send you back. Of course, Broly could have went back himself but he wouldn't do so. He still wanted to kill Mechikabura and he didn't want to expose himself to Kronoa. By the way, where's Bardock? He got injured and I sent him back to the Time Nest. Kronoa said casually. Oh right, the Time Nest is my home. It is safe there, she quickly added. Of course, she didn't mention that the Time Vault was located there. If the Time Vault was destroyed, all of history will be erased and the universe will cease to exist. She didn't trust Broly at all but it would be good if she could borrow his strength against Mechikabura. Broly did know about it, but he didn't bother asking about it. Don't you have Senzu beans? No, we already used them all up, Goten suddenly said while observing Broly. He realized that Broly had a Senzu bean with it and obviously knew about its properties. Additionally, Broly seemed sane. The others noticed that as well, but they didn't know what to think about it. I see. Broly grabbed into the bag at his waists and pulled some healing capsules out. Surprisingly, the bag survived the battle with Mechikabura. He still had plenty of healing capsules. He also had a Senzu bean in his secret pocket in his armor as well. But he wouldn't share that with anyone. He threw one capsule to each one of them. He told them that it would be good for them before eating one himself. Goku was the first to eat the healing capsule without any concerns. He quickly recovered his powers and his wounds healed up. The others saw that and immediately threw in the capsule as well. They could instantly tell how it repaired their damaged bodies and returned a good chunk of their energy. What kind of capsule was that? I feel great, Goten said astonished while flexing. Medicine produced from the fruit of the Tree of Might. Broly answered, The Tree of Might? You mean the tree that uses the whole life force of an entire planet to grow. Goku was shocked. He seemed to remember it from his fight against Tulls who had brought it to Earth in an attempt to suck up its life force. Indeed. Don't worry, I don't use planets. We used a special crystal. Since it's only for our elite troops we have accumulated enough for the next few years, Broly said casually. What do you mean your elite troops? Vegeta suddenly called out. Seems like he had listened to the whole conversation. Elite troops are just the strongest forces of my planet, Exausia. It mostly consists of science since their strength grew tremendously with the help of the technical advanced training rooms, 
But the strongest of the other races we absorbed are becoming more common in these troops or higher positions, Broly said flatly. He didn't show any emotions. Those were just facts he told them. Your planet? Vegeta's eyes widened. He seemed to have guessed what Broly implied. Yes, obviously I am their king. The king of all scions. Broly shot Vegeta a glance before smirking. Vegeta furrowed his eyebrows. He wanted to say something, but Goku interrupted him. We arrived. There, we smashed him into the mountain here and these rocks are the debris remaining from it. Right, Vegeta? HM? Yes, it is here. Vegeta agreed while pondering about something else. Good. Then I will locate him now. The demon pointed at the debris with his staff which had a floating peak with a small sphere in the middle. A red beam shot out of his staff ending midair, but nothing happened. The demon frowned. It seemed like there were some problems. Something is blocking me. I can't sense his location. It looks like he sealed off the demon realm. Let me help you. Kronoa rolled up her sleeves before she pointed both her palms to the place the demon was pointing at. She sent some kind of waves out. It took them a while before a black hole with red flames surrounding it appeared. All right, let's hope he didn't get far. We should hurry, the demon said and then flew straight into the rift without waiting for their response. The others quickly followed him. A moment later they appeared somewhere in the middle of a rocky wasteland. The rocks and the sky were in a shade of dark blue. Suddenly a key signature peaked in the distance, followed by four other outbursts of key. This feels like Frisia, Cell, and Kid Buu, Goku exclaimed as he sensed the key. And Janemba's and Broly's key is there too, Vegeta added while giving Broly a glance. What are you mumbling about? Let's go, Broly said and shot towards the key signature without considering their opinion. Broly could, after all, sense the magic power of Mechikabura. Although the signal was faint, it was worth to look into it. The others didn't argue and quickly followed his lead. A few seconds of flying and they arrived a few hundred meters away from a few figures. They could immediately tell that those figures were the past villains they had defeated. They were standing in a row like good soldiers. Behind them was Mechikabura, who seemed rather beat. Still after the fight with Broly and the beating from Gogeta, his conditions were rather good. At least Broly would be more dead than alive if he fought against someone of Gogeta's level. Although he looked rather good, Broly could hardly detect any magic power from Mechikabura, but instead of being relieved, he felt somewhat uneasy, especially after seeing the reassured smile on Mechikabura's face. They positioned themselves opposite the villains. The villains seemed like they were surrounded by a dark purple, almost black aura. Their clothes were also tainted black seemingly fitting to their aura. Their eyes were empty only showing the eyes white. It was obvious that they weren't conscious. Mechikabura flew away without saying anything. They wanted to follow him but were quickly blocked. Suddenly a black figure rapidly approached them. He had spikes coming out of his knees, elbows, shoulders and back. He also had two horns coming out of the top of his head. He had a dark blue middle section but otherwise was completely black. This was Sin Shinran, the one-star shadow dragon. But it wasn't his normal form, he had the seven dragon balls in his chest. No wonder Mechikabura was so confident. He prepared a distraction. Seems like I will see the fusion dance. Broly thought as his body instantly bulked up to 2.5 meters. His hair slowly grew as he easily entered Legendary Super Saiyan 3. Broly grinned as he thought about how he had previously struggled to reach the next level. He thought he was going to have a little vacation, have some fun at the Cell games and now here he was confronted with strong enemies that seemed to be boosted with magic. Broly couldn't help but tremble. He was thrilled. Broly completely ignored the others as they were discussing something hastily. To hell with it. I can't wait anymore. Ha ha ha. You are mine. Broly dashed right into the middle of Villain Row. Broly instantly reached Frisia and chopped down. Frisia wasn't able to react and was immediately shot to the ground like a comet. Before Broly could follow up, Cell tried to kick him away, but Broly blocked it with an arm and swung Cell into a mountain. Suddenly, another Broly as a legendary Super Saiyan dashed towards Broly like a mad bull. Broly's expression looked like he saw the greatest thing. He didn't back away or dodged. He dashed towards the other Broly to meet him. They both punched out, creating a massive crater. The other Broly seemed to be outmatched as he had to take a few steps back. Broly wanted to follow up, but he suddenly felt danger. Although he didn't have great balance after the clash, he quickly jumped out of the way. Just after he jumped away, he saw a big red straight sword deeply embedded into the ground. The others were surprised seeing Broly dash into the enemy's group without any strategies. 
They saw him take on Cell, Frisia, Janemba, and other Broly at the same time. The others, Kid Buu and Sin Shinran, however, seemed to have other plans as they dashed towards their group. All right, let's do as we discussed, the demon said as he pointed his staff at the two approaching. They were directly trapped in a sphere. He put his energy into the barriers while Vegeta and Goku turned Super Saiyan 4. Then Goten, Trunks, and Goku, Vegeta performed the fusion dance. With a bright light, two pillars brightened the surroundings. It is time to get serious. A voice that seemed to consist of two overlapping sounded out from one of the bright lights. The light dimmed and revealed a muscular frame with a brown fur and fiery crimson hair. His body was surrounded by a golden sparkly aura that seemed to reach the heavens. Gogeta had steeped on the stage. Let's kick some ass. With a similar voice a figure with a sword on his back was revealed. He had black hair in the middle with purple on the sides. Gotenks directly went Super Saiyan and headed towards Mechikabura with Kronoa, while Gogeta flew towards Sinshinran and the demon engaged Kid Buu. The barriers disappeared and before the two could retaliate, Gogeta and the demon directly pummeled them to the ground. It seemed like the dark aura wasn't as strong as when they would have been with the dark dragon balls. Gogeta easily dominated Sin Shinran, but unlike the series every hit was meant to kill. Sin Shinran was quickly turned into a bloody mess. While they were fighting, dark clouds gathered before a giant black dragon emerged from the ground. It was dark. Shinlong. How was he back already? Even if the dark dragon balls were gathered, they wouldn't be usable for another year. Gogeta was distracted for a second and was hit in the face. He stumbled back slightly before staring at Sin Shinran. Gogeta jumped back and put his arms to the front at the approaching Sin Shinran. Big Bang Kamehameha. A sphere formed in front of his palms. Rings of energy were coming out of it until it turned into a bright blue beam, destroying everything in its path. Gogeta took a deep breath as he looked at the path of destruction he just created. Nothing of Sin Shinran remained. He looked at the others if they needed help, and his eyes immediately widened. Broly was standing, breathing heavily. His body had numerous bleeding cuts and bruises all over his body. But what surprised Gogeta was something else. Broly was surrounded with four corpses that were torn apart in numerous pieces. Heads were crushed, and limps were twisted. Janemba, Cell, Frisia, and other Broly were slaughtered by him. Broly noticed Gogeta's gaze and stared back. Something wrong? Broly asked frowning while pulling out a healing capsule and throwing it in his mouth. Why are you still here? If you are done, let's go assist Kronoa and Gotenks. Broly urged him that was what they had agreed upon. Although Broly hadn't really listened to them, he was still aware that Kronoa and Gotenks had headed towards Mechikabura. Broly and Gogeta were speeding through the air heading towards Dark Shenlong, who was summoned a few seconds ago. On the way, Gogeta spoke out, pretty impressive that you were able to handle them all by yourself. You even killed the other you who had reached Super Saiyan 4. Bitch please. Don't compare me with these mindless puppets. Gogeta looked back and frowned as he saw Broly's expression. Although Broly didn't have any wounds from the fight, he still was pale and looked sick. Even the radiance of the third level of Super Saiyan wasn't able to hide it. I think you should take a rest. Super Saiyan 3 isn't something you can use right off the bat. Humph. <laughs> as if that form would trouble me. After the Zenkai, my cells are tough enough to handle it. Indeed, the legendary Super Saiyan 3 transformation wasn't the problem. Since his body could stabilize his soul and prevent it from breaking apart, so can the soul affect the body. At first, it was just a severe headache, but after going into another tough fight, his conditions worsened. Broly now only wanted to lie down and rest, but he wanted to see the death of Mechikabura with his own eyes. I don't think you can help much in your condition. Don't worry. I can handle that demon on my own. After saying that Gogeta sped up and turned into beam light heading straight towards Dark Shenlong. Broly was speechless. Handle him yourself? Like you did before? What a joke. Broly immediately accelerated as well. It only took Gogeta a few seconds before he arrived. The Dark Dragon finished his greeting and waited for the wish but the figures below him were fighting with each other and screaming their wishes. It seemed like he would only grant the wish if the person's attention was entirely on him. Gogeta saw this and directly headed into battle. Gogeta was much stronger than Gotenks or Kronoa. As soon as he stepped into the battle, he easily dominated Mechikabura with the others. Mechikabura was barely able to defend himself. Broly arrived and saw this. He immediately realized how much he underestimated him. Even after all that fighting, fleeing through time and space and empowering strong helpers, he was still able to resist. 
Nevertheless, Mechikabura was really unfortunate. Broly didn't join the battle but directly flew to the dragon. Mechikabura saw this and was immediately enraged. He wouldn't let that scion steal his wish again. He tried to break free from the encirclement of the two fusions and the Supreme Kai but was instantly suppressed, while Broly easily reached Dark Shenlong. I wish for you to strengthen my soul with all you power, Broly shouted out after flying to the front of the dragon's face. I cannot grant your wish. I cannot directly affect your soul. What? He can't. Broly didn't expect that at all. After all the dragon could even move around souls and bring them back to the living realm, shouldn't healing or strengthening be aligned with his abilities? Is it because I am not originally from this universe? Could you hurry up? The fusion doesn't hold that long anymore. Gogeta suddenly screamed out as he hammered down on Mechikabura's barrier, which directly cracked on impact. I wish for you to restrain Mechikabura's power for as long as you can, Broly shouted out. He didn't think about gaining strength anymore. He just wanted to end Mechikabura and go back to heal his soul. Mechikabura obviously heard this and directly tried his best to open up time and space to flee. But before he could escape the barrage of attacks from Gogeta, the dragon spoke, wish granted. You have 20 seconds. After the dragon's voice fell, Mechikabura's body lost momentum and cracks on his barrier spread out. Without a supply of energy, it was only a matter of time until it broke. Gogeta and Gotenks went all out on their attacks as they hammered down on the barrier. The cracks covered the whole barrier and it looked like it was about to shatter. You fools! Just end it already! Broly's voice boomed as he shouted out. He suddenly appeared a few meters away from Mechikabura and pointed his cupped hands towards him. Gogeta and Gotenks saw this and directly retreated before preparing an attack as well. Gamma Ray burst. Big Bang Kamehameha. Burning Kamehameha. They had surrounded Mechikabura in a triangular form. Their attacks devastated everything in its path with Mechikabura in the middle. Mechikabura's face became pale and his expression became desperate. He tried to urge his magic power, but it was bound and wouldn't move at all. The three attacks landed on the barrier on the same time. The barrier immediately shattered and was incinerated into nothingness as the three attacks burned through it all. With nothing in the attack's way, Mechikabura was squarely hit by the attacks and only an agonizing scream sounded out as his body was consumed by the attacks. The three attacks met in the middle and turned into a gigantic explosion brightening the surroundings as it then turned into a mushroom-shaped cloud, which seemed to hit some kind of barrier around it as it couldn't travel further. Kronoa could be seen with her hands up, glowing slightly. After the initial explosion, she put her hands down and the cloud started to dissipate. Foo! If I hadn't sealed away this area of space and time, you guys would have annihilated this universe. Kronoa started angrily shouting out which made Broly roll his eyes. After the cloud settled and dissipated from the surrounding, only a void was left behind. The dragon had long disappeared through the timelines. The red-haired demon was nowhere to be seen as well. But Broly didn't care. He was only concerned with his damaged soul. He went up to Kronoa who was still ranting and celebrating at the same time. Hey, how about you sent me to my timeline now? You irresponsible handsome, eh? Yeah sure. Let's first go to my timeline then I can bring you back. Gogeta and Gotenks had already defused after that outburst of energy. The four were totally exhausted. Kronoa quickly transported the five to the time nest. As soon as they were brought to the time nest, they fell to the ground. They were greeted by a big bird, which immediately flew towards Broly inspecting him. Broly knew that this bird, Tokitoki, is a divine bird that could influence and create time. To be honest, Broly wanted to take it away and make some experiments with it and learn its abilities to manipulate time but he knew that he would be instantly regarded as an enemy and with his strength now, he wouldn't necessarily win. He just waved his hand attempting to shoo away the bird. He stood up and looked around for Bardock, but he didn't see anyone. All right. I can get you back now, Kronoa said as she stepped towards Broly, who was still circled by the bird. Honestly, Broly you helped out more than you think Dash. Hey, you really are strong. Even stronger than that other version. I am probably only a match for you if I turn Super Saiyan 4. How about it? Wanna go for a round? Maybe two. Goku suddenly interrupted. No. Broly denied him before turning to Kronoa again. By the way, where's Bardock? He should be around somewhere. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Broly didn't add anything. It didn't really concern him, after all. Okay. Bring me back then. You are leaving already? I know we are going to spar. Goku sounded disappointed, but everyone just ignored him. 
Broly, don't mess up with your kingdom. Otherwise, I will visit your timeline and beat you up. Mph. Vegeta suddenly spoke out before turning away and crossing his arms. What a Sundra, Broly thought. Beat me up? Good luck with that, you can't even beat Goku. How do you think you stand against me, the legendary Super Saiyan? With that Broly disappeared from the spot, avoiding the raging Vegeta. Kronoa had brought him back to his timeline. He appeared not far from two groups. On one side were the Z Fighters and the other side were A's and Taro. They all seemed to have recovered and had no injuries. They were still on guard, seemingly waiting for something. As soon as they saw Broly, A's and Taro flew to his side. Broly silently looked at the Z Fighters for a while. Since you have one, I will return in seven years for your judgment. Broly's voice sounded out clearly. Taro looked surprised. But Broly they dashed Taro quickly stopped speaking after seeing the glare Broly gave him. I mean King Broly, it was obvious that these two weren't from Earth and had definitely something to do with their sudden increase in strength. Otherwise dash. Otherwise you would have one. Lucky for you I was there to save your ass. The two didn't step into the ring so even if they used magic to help the Z Fighters, it wasn't something I forbid. Taro seemed to want to continue arguing but seeing Broly's glance, he just swallowed his words. He knew that look. Broly would definitely beat him up if he continues. Broly turned to the Z Fighters and let his eyes wander through the group. Their expression gave them away. It looked like they thought the fight would continue as well. But after Broly said it was their victory, they breathed out in relief. Broly's eyes stopped at Cell, who involuntarily froze like a deer that was about to be hit by a car. Broly grinned slightly. Cell, how about it? Want to join my ranks? Broly offered a hand which stunned Cell and the other Z Fighters for a moment. The others looked at Cell waiting for his answer. Cell pondered about it. He was somewhat aware when he was controlled by Tawa. He had witnessed Broly's strength, especially after he took off that necklace. If he stayed here, he would need to seriously train to overcome the gap between them and even then, it wasn't a sure victory. He had already trained for a year in the hyperbolic time chamber and still saw no way of him beating Broly. Maybe he could absorb every Earth's warrior, but even then, would he be able to win? No, he didn't think so. Cell already took it for granted that this planet was doomed if Broly came back in seven years. But maybe, maybe he could follow Broly into the vast universe and absorb as many strong warriors as he could until he became stronger than Broly. With time and enough warriors to gobble up, he would surely become stronger than Broly someday. But for this he had to become Broly's subordinate and that wasn't something he could endure. He thought about declining the offer, but after feeling Broly's presence and the way he talked, he wasn't sure if he survived if he did decline. As Cell had trouble answering, Broly's voice sounded out once again. Just see it as a temporal alliance. I just want to see how far you can go with my support. Broly had a grin on his face. Nobody knew what he was thinking. Cell was skeptical as well, but he felt like he didn't have any choice but to accept the offer. Hmm. If that is the case, I see no problem in teaming up. Cell answered with a seemingly confident smile. Cell walked steadily to Broly and stood on his side next to Taro. The Z Fighters didn't say anything as they were aware of Cell's personality after the time he spent with them. He also had directly destroyed a city after he woke up. They weren't surprised seeing him join Broly after being invited. How about you, 17 and 18? 17 was directly angry after being asked to join Broly's forces. You! Do you think we would team up with you after what you did to 16? Sigh, emotional I see, but you do know 16 is a machine, right? He may be offline now, but I am sure after you repair him, he will be as good as new and surprisingly I have the tools to do so, Broly said with a grin. The two androids hesitated to decline now. Don't. Bulma will be able to repair him as well. Unexpectedly, Krillin shouted out, making the two androids renew their stance. Broly didn't want to wait any longer. Indeed, she can do it as well. Broly suddenly took a small black rectangle out of his pockets. It looked like an USB. Broly threw it at Piccolo who caught it easily. Piccolo looked at what he had caught, and it was indeed an USB. On there you find a technique similar to Kaioken, but it isn't as straining on the body. Of course, the increase of strength isn't as high as well. You can use it without repercussion. Maybe then you non-science will be able to contribute to the fight. All right. Cell hold on to Taro. We are leaving. Although Cell was puzzled, he silently put a hand on Taro's shoulder, and they quickly disappeared from the Z Fighter's sight. Piccolo almost crushed the USB in his hand after hearing what Broly just said. 
It was obvious that Broly thought of them as useless and indeed, they didn't contribute much in the fight. Even his Sog student, Gohan, was already stronger than he was. Although Piccolo hated accepting something from the enemy, he would make sure Broly would regret giving them this. Piccolo had of course tried to learn Kaioken as well in the past, but a Namekian body was just too different. Their cells worked differently which allowed them to regenerate even limbs, but also denied them to learn Kaioken. As for the humans, they could learn it, but their bodies were too fragile. The burden the technique with a basic 2 times multiplier put them under was too much for them to handle, even for just a minute. It would only be a waste of time to learn it, so the others didn't. If the technique was really compatible with them, their strength would rise exponentially. Still, the simple fact that it was Broly who gave them the technique made them hesitant. After a while, they had returned to the lookout and summoned Shenlong. They wished for the people to be resurrected that died because of Cell. Just as the androids were about to leave, they overheard Krillin make the wish for them to become human again. Because they were already human, Shenlong couldn't grant it, but Krillin changed his wish to remove the bombs inside of them. On Exausia, in Broly's personal training chamber, for people suddenly appeared. Obviously these four were Broly, Aze, Taro and Cell. Broly lead them outside and flew into the air with Cell following closely. Cell looked around and could feel many strong auras which made him excited. Cell if you dare kill as much as a single innocent person here, I will use your dead body to do some experiments on. Broly's cold voice immediately interrupted Cell's thoughts, making him shiver deeply. He only nodded. Broly's voice made it clear that there was no room for negotiation regarding this. Cell didn't even dare to make a joke. There are a lot more of these fruits I gave you which will be given to you if you fulfilled your missions. Besides that, you can absorb as many of our enemies as you like. I don't care about them. Do as you please. Aze will tell you more about the missions and the training opportunities. Have fun, partner. Broly said with a smile before disappearing quickly. Broly didn't entertain Cell any longer and was on his way to meet up with his wives. They were still the strongest in his army and he needed someone to protect him when he was healing his soul. With his wound, he couldn't go all out without injuring himself. He wanted to be at 100% as quick as possible. He felt the key of Zhangya and Kana, they seemed to be together. He directly teleported to them. As soon as he arrived, he was greeted with hugs and kisses, but he quickly stopped them. Where is Aaliyah? Is she on a mission? Broly directly asked as he couldn't sense her key. The training rooms were isolated fairly well, but because Broly was incredibly sensitive and was familiar with her key, he could usually still sense it even if it was incredibly weak. Broly had a bad feeling. HM? No, she went training just a few hours ago. Said that she was about to have a breakthrough. Kana answered puzzled. Broly didn't say anything and directly teleported himself into Aaliyah's training room. The room was completely destroyed with huge dents covering the strong walls. Broly quickly looked around and his eyes widened in shock as he saw Aaliyah lying in a pool of blood. He quickly rushed up to her and held her cold body up. He quickly felt her pulse but he already knew through his vision of truth. There was no pulse, no breath. Her skin was pale white, and a huge cut was going through her chest. Her life force had already disappeared. She was dead. Daz was on his way to one of Exausia's elite team. The Galactic Patrol had issued some complaints about the destructiveness on a mission, and after looking through the data, Daz agreed that some of the members went too far. Daz looked up and saw black clouds forming in the previous clear sunny sky. On the sidewalk, a few elves were noticing something odd as well. Is the ground shaking? Oh yes. Did they announce an earthquake? Didn't see anything on the news warning about that. No, there wasn't anything dash crack. Suddenly the ground of the street started cracking, rapidly extending from the city center outside. The tremble in the ground grew exponentially stronger as time went on. Whoa, what is going on? A scion spoke out. Des frowned deeply. He knew better than anyone else that the ground wasn't something easily broken. It could even endure attacks from someone on the level of a full-powered Frisia. This wasn't something a normal earthquake could cause. Just as he thought about it, a humongous violent aura spread out. He in form of a green fiery pillar pierced the heaven. The pressure was so immense, the weaker ones directly fainted as the aura and key was being released. The stronger ones kneeled down and vomited out their dinner. Even Daz, whose strength was top class, slumped down slightly from the pressure. Just as the ones who were still conscious thought it wouldn't get any worse, a deep roar shook the planet. Buildings started collapsing and the street split in half as lightning struck the ground. Almost everyone had collapsed and started bleeding out of their orifices, 
The only ones who were able to retain consciousness were the very peak of exhaustia, and even they were kneeling on the ground, not daring to move. Thunder. The shaking ground. Collapsing buildings and a roar that resembled an enraged beast filled the surroundings. But no one screamed because no one was able to muster any strength. Even though the world now was filled with sound, it still was eerily silent. Daz was still trying to comprehend what was happening. If Daz didn't recognize the key signature, he would have thought they were under attack. It sounded like Broly was about to go insane from rage. But what made Broly so enraged? Daz sensed from where Broly's key was coming from and noticed that it was not coming directly from the center but a bit from to the side. It was on Broly's private property. Did someone try to assassinate him again? But who would be able to enter Broly's place? It was highly secured and no one could enter the place without Broly's or his wife's permission. Suddenly another four different key were released violently as if they wanted to compete with Broly. One pale green and three golden pillars rose into the sky next to Broly's. Daz could instantly tell which those key signature belonged to. Aze, Taro, Kana, and Zanya. The four strongest right after Aaliyah and Broly. Right? Where is my daughter's key? Shouldn't she be in Broly's villa as well? A bad feeling suddenly emerged in his belly. As if he had gained new strength his body directly shot into the sky and flew towards Broly and the others. His eyes were bloodshot as his thoughts went wild. He urged his energy to his maximum as he headed there. He only took a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity for him. Up close to the raging key piercing into the sky, his energy seemed like a small match in front of a storm. But he didn't let himself waver as he directly headed to the open roof of one of the training rooms on Broly's property. His gaze pierced through the key and saw how the five were surrounding Aaliyah's body. His eyes were wide open as he saw the blood stains and wound on her chest. He entered the room and directly pushed away Taro and Kana out of his way. He kneeled down opposite to Broly who was now standing. He held Aaliyah up and pushed away the strains of bloody hair on her face. Baby, no no no. Come on open your eyes. Come on please. He pulled her into his embrace as he kissed her head. My little girl, please. He begged her to open her eyes and tried to feed her a healing capsule. But no matter what he did, she wouldn't move. He let out a heart-wrenching cry. Daz's key suddenly turned golden as he directly went super soon. His key violently surged out, cracking the already destroyed ground further as he vented his emotions. No one said anything as they looked at Daz, embracing Aaliyah. After a while, Daz put Aaliyah's head gently on the ground and let his fingers wander over a few scars on Aaliyah's neck. A message was cut into her flesh. The message was simple. For San and Sina. X. It was clear that this was revenge for the death of the two assassins that were sent by Mamba to kill Broly. Des slowly stood up. They all had retracted their key and the only thing that was leaking into the surroundings was pure killing intent. Their eyes were practically glowing with hatred. Daz with his face filled with tear stains and a gaze seemingly wanting to watch everything burn down, looked straight at Broly. He didn't need to say anything as Broly, and the others felt the same. He wouldn't rest until he had found the bastard and rip him to shreds and make him suffer as much as possible. After finally calming down, Broly's senses had already spread out, beginning to analyze the surrounding space to get any clues on the murderer. He instantly noticed an area where the space was forcefully ripped open and closed again. He knew that with this forceful fix, the space would return to normal after a few dozen more minutes. If he wanted to find the murderer, he needed to move out immediately. Broly nodded to the others and took a few steps. He stretched out with his hands back to back as if he was trying to open something. A small tear at his fingertip suddenly appeared, and with a yank he ripped it open revealing a black hole with greenish flames at the border. Without saying anything, he went through the hole. The others followed him silently. A few moments later, they arrived on a barren planet at the edge of the universe. The space surrounding the planet was chaotic, not very different from Perdidus, maybe even more chaotic. Broly looked around for a fraction of a second before ripping open space again. Shortly afterwards they arrived on a very similar planet with chaotic space around it. A few hurricanes were devastating the ground not far away. Broly again ripped open space and traveled to another planet, which was lush green from the flourishing flora. The space, however, surrounding the planet was not chaotic. In fact, there didn't seem to be any space around the planet at all. A sun was shining brightly in the sky but Broly could instantly tell that the sun was in a different dimension. Broly's eyes flashed after he had scanned the planet. He seemed to take a few slow steps, 
but his body moved across half of the surface of the planet before he stopped only a few hundred meters away from an inconspicuous hut, hidden deep in the woods. The hut itself seemed to contain the energy emissions coming from inside. It not only covered key but magic and life force as well. It even prevented leakage of mental and emotional energy, but in front of Broly's vision this was completely useless. Nothing could have been there at all and it would still be the same outcome. The other five quickly arrived next to Broly. They slowly walked towards the hut. The surrounding plants started wilting as if they met something extremely toxic, but it was just their intense aura crushing the life force of anything near them. Every step they took left a deep imprint on the ground. They looked like six enraged devils had clawed their way out of hell only to meet their most hatred enemy. Unexpectedly, the door of the hut opened and a figure stepped out. It seemed like the person already knew of their arrival and was calmly looking at him. If Broly had to make a comparison, the figure looked like a ninja version of Hit from Universe 6. He had a katana on his side and was wearing all black. The only thing that was missing was a facial disguise, and his look would have been complete. Broly didn't say anything. He had already detected Aaliyah's lingering key on the blade. Broly knew that this was the one they were looking for. Broly was already in his legendary Super Saiyan 3 form and with his rage he was much stronger than before. His senses had risen to another level as well. Even his soul seemed to be held together, even though it was being heavily strained by his actions. His whole being was currently being fueled by his intense rage. Spread out, Broly said coolly. Without saying anything the others started surrounding the hut and the assassin at its doorstep. Giving him no direction to escape to, he may be more powerful than the others, but they could still slow him down for a while. The assassin didn't move, as if he wasn't concerned about their actions. I didn't think you would be able to find me here. According to the report, you took a while to locate Mamba, and yet after a few minutes you have already arrived here. The assassin spoke calmly while slowly walking towards Broly. Broly moved to him as well. He was curious to know why Broly was able to find and even enter this planet. It was after all in another dimension. He now stood 10 meters away from Broly. I wonder, how did you get here? Broly didn't answer him. He wasn't here for chit-chat. There was no reason for that assassin to know about his ability to travel through space. If the assassin had traveled with a spaceship, it would have taken Broly years to find him, if at all. Fortunately for Broly, the assassin forcefully traversed space, leaving behind a clear trail for Broly to follow. The assassin smiled slightly. Seems like I won't get an answer. It doesn't matter anymore since you were able to get here. Although it wasn't in the contract, it seems like I will have to finish you myself. Remember it was... Reap, who killed you. Suddenly Reap's body vanished and instantly appeared behind Broly without anyone able to react. Reap was already mid-swing. His katana sliced through the air as it directly reached Broly's neck. As if it didn't meet any resistance at all, his katana cut right through Broly's neck. Reap squinted his eyes as he jumped backwards, creating some distance between him and Broly. Broly's body with a white line on his neck slowly became blurry before disappearing altogether. The time he disappears is 0.008 seconds. Doesn't stop time but enters another dimension. Uses the dimension to close in to his opponent and exit it again to strike him. While he is in the dimension, he leaves behind a clone and disperses it again after he returns. This way his opponent won't easily see through it and thinks that Reap moves instantaneously or stops time. Should be about it, right? Broly's voice sounded out as he calmly analyzed Reap's abilities, and it was coming from the spot Reap had seen them at the beginning. Reap turned around and saw them all still standing there as if they hadn't moved at all. Reap looked around only to see the other figures that had surrounded him disappear in the same manner as Broly's figure did. Reap was shocked to know that those were just illusions and that they, in fact, hadn't moved at all. After calming down slightly, he only now realized what Broly just said and it shook him to his core. It was a secret that he protected with all his might. Even the organization he was working for didn't know about it and thinks he stops time. But now his secret was easily revealed in a single exchange. Reap gritted his teeth and forced himself to calm down. As an assassin he was quickly able to suppress any panic that might have surfaced. He tried to analyze the situation and figured that even if Broly knew about it, he still doesn't know where he would appear. He can even use invisible key attacks to strike Broly. He wouldn't even know what hit him. He had to put all his effort into this. He couldn't allow anyone to know more about his abilities. Reap held his katan high above his head and swung down right into the direction of Broly, who instantly sidestepped. Suddenly the ground split in half as if it was cut with a gigantic sword. 
Broly only sneered and stomped the ground. Broly was propelled directly towards Reap. Just as he was about to reach and punch him, Broly stomped the ground again. He instantly changed his flying path to the left. Suddenly Reap reappeared with his sword high above his head about to swing, but Broly rammed him with his shoulder, knocking the wind out of Reap. Broly pushed him through several big trees until he pinned him against a boulder. Reap was trying to breath but was directly headbutt by Broly. Then Broly took Reap's face and grinded it across the boulder's surface. Reap wildly swung his sword, making Broly retract his arm. Reap took a few steps to create some distance between the two. Reap frantically looked around and quickly found what he was looking for, Broly's companions. Reap entered his dimension and exited again directly behind a female scion, which should be Broly's wife, Kana. He put a hand on her shoulder and put the sword's tip at her back. Don't move or I will kill her. Reap looked coldly at Broly. It was only a short exchange, but he knew that he couldn't beat Broly. Reap cursed at the one who made the profile about Broly. Only twice or thrice as strong as Mamba. What a joke. They couldn't even be mentioned in the same breath. What about killing Broly to keep his secret? If he died here, why would he give a shit about someone knowing his secret? He only needed to survive. He watched Broly as he slowly backed away, pulling Kana with one hand. He used her body as a shield in case Broly used a key attack, but his unease only increased as he looked at Broly's expression. A mocking smile greeted him as if he looked at an idiot. Kana's head suddenly turned around 180 degrees with a wide smile on her face and bloodshot eyes, which frightened Reap for a moment. Suddenly her body turned into a blur and vanished. Reap was dazed. Another illusion. Then he spotted a few figures in the sky. The others were watching from a distance. They were too far away for him to cross the distance with the time he was in the dimension. He suddenly felt that he was unable to move his sword. Two fingers were pinching the blade. No matter how much strength he used it wouldn't budge. Broly was standing right in front of him expressionless. Reap had to look upwards to see his face. Broly's eyes were glowing brightly yellow. He put a hand on Reap's shoulder and clenched it slightly crushing it completely while taking the sword out of Reap's hand. Ah! An agonizing scream escaped Reap's mouth as tried to remove Broly's hand. After Broly let go again, only a bloody mess that looked nothing like a shoulder was revealed. It looked like someone squished pastry except it was heavily bleeding. Reap wanted to use his ability but he couldn't. He needed time to store so he could open his dimension, but he didn't feel the time around him. His despair reached an all-time high as he looked into the hatred-filled eyes. Reap tried to put strength into his leg to jump away, but as soon as his muscles in his leg slightly tensed, a black blur crossed his view downwards. But, a piercing pain came from his leg. Reap looked down and saw his sword going right through his thigh. His screams were driving away the birds in the surroundings. Broly pushed Reap slightly, forcing him to take a few steps back to support his body. But as soon as he put some weight on his pierced leg, he collapsed to the ground. Reap's face was covered in sweat. They had only fought for a few ten seconds and he was too exhausted to flee. He wasn't even given a chance to plead. As soon as he tried to beg for his life, Broly would pull out the sword and pierce another limb. He wanted to tell Broly about his organization that wanted revenge, but Broly seemed to be disinterested, piercing through Reap's limbs and crushing his bones. Reap's conscience began to blur and he was about to faint until an unbelievable pain came from his forehead, like someone was drilling into his head directly on the nerves. Broly had put his hand over Reap's face and was absorbing all the memories while he attacked Reap's soul. He had experience through Tawa and his strength increased a lot. The process was far quicker than it used to be. He only took a few minutes until he filtered everything out about a certain organization Reap was working for and about something else. After Broly was done, he retracted his hand giving Reap time to breath until he smashed down on Reap's navel. Reap felt like something cracked inside his body and it felt like every bone in his muscle broke at the same time. Something seemed to be robbed from him and he felt extremely weak. Broly had smashed his center in the navel region that was responsible for generating key and magic. Reap slowly realized that he was crippled. Even if he found an opportunity to escape, he wouldn't be able to take it. Now he was even less than an ant in front of Broly. Tears were rolling down his check as he mustered up strength to say something. Plea dash, before Reap could finish even the first word, he was turned over and felt a blunt force impacting his lower back. Something snapped and he couldn't feel his legs anymore. His eyes were filled with pain, despair but mostly exhaustion. 
Not only was his key and magic crippled, but now he couldn't even move normally. Reap slowly started to accept that he wouldn't survive this. He only wished that he would die soon. But after remembering Broly's eyes, he knew that would be an unrealistic wish. Reap was picked up by the neck, making his already difficult breathing worse. He recognized how Broly fed him something. As soon as he swallowed it, he felt his body rapidly repair itself. Even his key and magic center was slowly recovering. But he definitely wasn't happy about that. Broly raised him to eye level. Reap was shivering as he saw Broly's glint in his eyes. He couldn't help but have a bad foreboding. Still, he gritted his teeth. He didn't show any fear in front of the inevitable death. He tried to accept it. He wouldn't let Broly get more joy out of this. Reap didn't want to plead anymore but mock Broly. Saying something about his dead wife but Broly had other plans. He smashed Reap's key slash magic center again, destroying it with precision. After making him a cripple again, Broly stated speaking. You are very brave, Reap, not showing any fear. How about... The corner of Broly's lips curled upwards, forming an evil smile. Reap expression changed dramatically after hearing what Broly said. He felt like the next words came straight out of the devil's mouth, filling him with absolute despair. How about we show you braveness to your wife and your two little sons? Broly ripped open space and quickly traveled through the universe before arriving near the center of the whole universe in a gigantic galaxy. From Reap's memories, Broly knew that his family was on a giant planet with a high export of goods. They traded with anyone and although some tried to meddle with the business, no one had succeeded. After all of them, including a known mercenary, were killed no one dared to provoke this planet and its secret backer. This bustling planet of course had Reap as its true secret leader. Reap had installed highest security devices and strong experts from his assassin organization as protection. Reap also seemed to work for another organization with another alias. The organization was ruling almost half of the galaxy and Reap seemed to have a high position in there as well. All in all, no one would or could mess with him or his family with that kind of background. Obviously, the security measures and the assassins were just decoration in front of Broly's means. In a blink of an eye, he killed any expert stationed in Reap's home. The only survivors were his wife and his sons who didn't notice a single thing. Broly nodded to Daz, who immediately rushed in and only a few seconds later, dragged the three out. Reap was begging to let them go and that he would do anything so they wouldn't touch them. Tears were running down his face as he despaired at the sight of his family. Broly put a foot on Reap's back pushing him into the ground and holding him there. Broly didn't say anything as he let Des take the lead. Daz had always spoiled Aaliyah and loved her dearly. It wouldn't be right for only Broly to vent. Daddy! The sons screamed out as they saw their mighty father under Broly's foot. In the eyes of the sons, there was no way for their father to lose. Seeing him on the ground under Broly's foot shocked and confused them deeply. Dear, who are these people? Broly knew that his wife was aware of him being an assassin and had a deeper grasp on his power. Now seeing him completely suppressed, she somewhat realized what happened. The colors in her face were rapidly drained. Despair filled her eyes and unknowingly tears were running down her cheek. She guessed that one of his missions had failed and not only couldn't he escape but they somehow found a way here. Des ignored them and turned to Reap who was struggling on the ground. Choose one and I will let the others live. Des said as he stared Reap. Reap's eyes widened as he froze. No, please I beg you Dash. Choose or the others die too. Des interrupted him, not willing to listen to his pleas. I Dash, dear. Choose me Dash. The wife shouted out before she was slapped by Kana. Reap's hand clenched as he looked away not daring to look at his family. He had brought this to them. He regretted nothing more in his life than to have let this happen. If he knew that this would happen, he would have rejected this mission no matter what, even if there were penalties involved, but it was all too late. Choose me. The wife spat out blood before she shouted again, only to receive another slap. Dad. Mom, what is going on? The older son, barely thirteen, cried out. This was too much for him to handle. Ten nine. 8, 7, Des started counting down, indicating how long he would wait for his decision. I choose Liss. Reap looked at the ground, not daring to look up. He clenched his fists until blood was seeping out of his palms. Broly retracted his foot from his back but Reap didn't seem to have realized it. Clink. A gleam blinded Reap slightly. He finally raised his head and looked at his sword embedded into the ground just a hand reach away from him. Des spoke out coldly. You are an assassin, right? Do it yourself. Reap seemed to have lost all will. It's okay, honey. 
Think about Ra and Cray. Lis spoke out before being kicked in the stomach. Reap gritted his teeth before he stood up slowly and picked up his sword. Lis stood up and stumbled towards him. They hugged and kissed each other. Lis held his cheek and put her forehead against his. It's okay. I knew the risk. Daddy, no. We can beat them. Ra, the oldest, screamed out. But, I love you. Lis said and slumped down as her strength left her body. I am so sorry. Reap apologized as he gently put her on the ground while supporting her head. Lis' breathing became short and abrupt. She grasped Reap's hand tightly as if to encourage him. She couldn't say anything as blood filled her mouth. She took a last look at her children before every movement ceased and she died. Cut into her neck. Right, for Aaliyah, and then I am satisfied. After hearing this, Reap hatefully looked at Daz. Seems like you don't want your sons to survive after all, Daz said without changing his tone. Reap could only swallow his hate and write down the message on his wife's neck, like he did to Aaliyah. His hands were trembling and only with difficulties was he able to finish it. I did what you asked me to do. Yes, you did, Daz said, looking at Broly. Kill his sons, Broly said coolly. Reap immediately jumped to his kids, but on the way his body was pressed to the ground by an invisible force. We had a deal. You would let them live. Reap struggled to get up, but to no avail. Des said he wouldn't kill your sons. But that didn't include us. Broly said as he sat down on Reap's back and straightened Reap's head to look at his sons. He forced his eyes open and made him watch them. The others moved out and started beating the sons to death, while Reap was helplessly made to watch. His eyes were bloodshot and tried his best to struggle free but crippled he stood no chance. After a while they stopped moving. Even if I die today Dash, Reap's hateful voice sounded out but his teeth were instantly smashed by Daz, kick. Broly stepped back. Daz stomped on his back, snapping it in half, before Daz generated key in his palm and pulverized Reap's body. Nothing was left of this fearsome assassin. The others disposed of the other bodies as well before Broly blasted the whole castle into oblivion which finally alerted the other inhabitants of this planet. Broly and the others disappeared through space and after making some detours, Broly and Daz made their way to Exausia while the others went to New Namek. Fortunately for them, the Dragon Balls weren't used again. They quickly gathered them from the Namekians and waited for the others. Broly and Daz arrived shortly after with Broly carrying Aaliyah's body. Broly put her body down in front of the Dragon Balls. They quickly made the two wishes to heal her body and to return her soul to her body. After Purunga confirmed their wishes, they released a sigh of relief. After all, there were some situations when Purunga couldn't revive someone before and that made them anxious. Aaliyah's eyes trembled slightly before she opened them and looked around. Broly helped her up and hugged her tightly. Aaliyah seemed to have remembered something as her eyes became watery and tears fell down her cheek. Daz and the others hugged her deeply and tried to cheer her up, but she could only sob. They returned to Exausia after making their wishes. They remained with her for the next day and tried to cheer her up before they departed and let Broly and Aaliyah have some time for the two only. Broly knew that it hit her quite hard. Although she was a strong fighter, she was also a very gentle person and wouldn't easily handle something like being killed. Broly had toughened the girls up with the training sessions but that was all they were, training sessions. After the day the others spent with her and her tears had dried. One could guess that she would recover soon but Broly knew that wasn't the case. He had seen the memories from Reap. She was cultivating and was about to make another jump in terms of her control but at a critical moment space opened and a sword directly pierced through her chest. As tough as a science physique is, she didn't die immediately but started counterattacking with some key blasts, but her strength was already lessened rapidly. The attacks were easily blocked by Reap. She tried to escape but he prevented all of her attempts and pinned her down. She slowly bled out. She knew if she only opened the door, her key would be noticed by the others. As she was pinned down, she hoped that someone would save her, but until her last breath no one did. Broly had seen her expression filled with fear. He saw the hoping glint in her eyes until she couldn't last any longer. Slowly dying, hoping for rescue to come only to die alone with an assassin in an empty room. This wasn't something she could easily brush off after being revived. Broly feared that this would scar her, so he stayed with her until she would recover, no matter how long that would take. A few days passed with Broly and Aaliyah intimately cuddling and fooling around with each other. Aaliyah had already calmed down and recovered greatly, but Broly could still tell that it affected her even if she tried to hide it from him. Days and weeks passed with Broly pressing her into telling him what she actually felt and although she initially told him that it wasn't necessary, she stabilized emotionally through it a lot. 
At some time, Kana and Zongya joined them in their daily routine again and everything slowly returned to normal. While Broly could tell if something disturbed Aaliyah so could she, she felt that he acted weirdly sometimes. She had followed Broly one time to the bathroom and saw him heavily coughing over the sink before spitting some blood out. She instantly threw a fit as of why he didn't tell her about it. She forced him to explain everything that happened on Earth, the fight between the demons and the time patrol and that he killed Reap, but he didn't go into detail with that. He told her that he was currently recovering from a soul injury that was caused through his recklessly usage of it. After he killed Reap, he estimated that he would need about two years on his own to recover from it completely. He, of course, left out the fact that he was constantly in pain, but it seemed that she still realized that fact even without him mentioning it. After he was done, she only stared at him silently before her eyes became watery. You! Big idiot! I, I don't want you to suffer just because I was a little upset about my death. What, if it got wars dash, she said before beginning to sob, not able to finish what she wanted to say. She wiped away the tears that were flowing down her cheek with both her hands. Broly embraced her before gently saying, I wasn't there when you needed saving, at least I wanted to be here when you recover. Aaliyah buried her head in his chest and was hugging him tightly while sobbing quietly. They remained like that for a while before Aaliyah took a step back and looked straight at Broly. Her tears had dried and her eyes were filled with determination. You said that the origin spirit crystal might accelerate your recover, right? Then I will go with you and protect you. Broly smiled bitterly. You went through a lot dash. No buts. Broly. I am not a child that you need to protect. I was careless and got killed that wasn't your fault or anyone else's. If I had been stronger, I would have survived. Aaliyah interrupted him and spoke as if there was no room for negotiation which only made Broly frown. Stronger? You already trained so hard. There is Dash. That's where you are wrong. Aaliyah interrupted him again as she knew what he was going to say. Your guidance allowed me to get stronger than what I would have been on my own. But I don't train as hard as I could have, and I am speaking for Kana and Zhangya as well. Broly was stunned. He wanted to say something but decided to let her finish. Kana wanted to kill Frisia. Zhangya wanted to conquer the universe and I wanted to become the leader of the science but our ambitions were replaced with you. We wouldn't go out to train or fight others for years to have another breakthrough if it meant not seeing you. But you would and did. We only push ourselves as much as you expect us to, but we don't have the same drive as you have. We had you to protect us if needed and guide us. Unconsciously, we began to slack. The three of us had talked about this a short while ago and we came to the conclusion that we need to change something to get stronger. We only stayed on Exausia if you didn't order us, but now... We want to accept more missions and gain more experience. I think to start this off, it would be a good idea to bring you back to health and then start our training to become stronger. How about it? Aaliyah spoke resolutely. Broly stayed quiet for a second. I disagree. Aaliyah's eyes widened. She didn't think he would reject it so straightforwardly. We still need to destroy that assassin organization. After that, do as many missions as you like. Aaliyah was stunned for a while before her face blossomed with a beautiful smile. Yes. Aaliyah shouted cheerfully. Seems like I have pampered you too much. All right, after we eradicated that organization, you will have to fulfill a quota like any other person. You will be assigned the most dangerous mission, considering your strength. There are many galactic emperors that will need to be slayed by you. Understood. Broly embraced her and went on to tell the others. He told them about important stations of the organization and gave them the mission to completely destroy them. Unexpectedly, the organization was reaching into every corner of the universe. Most of the members, of course, were unimpressive, but there were still many of them. Because there were many, they needed branches where missions would be handed out and most would reside there during the time of their mission. A's with Taro, Kana with Zongya, and Broly with Aaliyah would go out in three teams leading tens of elite teams to eradicate them quickly. Since they would teleport between the locations, they would be able to quickly target the stronger stations without worrying that news spread. Before they could move out though, Broly needed to recover. Broly and Aaliyah teleported away without anyone noticing, while the elite teams were preparing themselves and gathered back on Exausia. Broly and Aaliyah appeared in the solar system where they had found the construct with the crystal inside. They quickly looked around the orbit from the destroyed planet. They had left the hall behind, since they couldn't teleport it away. Fortunately for them, the magic from the construct had made it so it was in sync with the planet it was on. They knew the area where to look for it. It didn't take them long to find it. Still orbiting the star with its imposing gate that was able to resist a full-out attack from Broly at that time. 
Broly was actually confident that he could break it apart with his current strength, but there wasn't a need to do so. They quickly flew towards it and Aaliyah opened the gate with telekinesis. As expected, the crystal was still hovering there as ethereal as before. Although it was only two meters tall now, it was still an extraordinary sight to view at with it shimmering in and out of existence. Aaliyah closed the gate again and observed the surroundings while Broly was preparing to absorb the crystal's power. He cut into his palm and used his soul to connect with the crystal while he was touching the crystal physically as well. To move his soul now was painful but nothing he couldn't endure. He circulated according to the technique and quickly felt the energy from the crystal enter his body and into his soul. Fortunately, his guess was correct. His soul that was blurry and dim before began to solidify and become clear again. Surprisingly, the energy was barely enough to heal his soul completely. There was a bit remaining. But the remaining energy couldn't be used to enhance his ability to generate more soul power anymore. He had already tried it with the energy crystal so it wasn't much of a surprise. Broly felt refreshed and instantly knew that his soul strength had increased tremendously. When he absorbed the crystal for the first time, he felt like his soul expanded to every corner of his body. But that was just his perception. His mind became clearer which made him more perceptive of his body and its every movement. Now, however, he felt different. With Kaka's fighting style, he was able to guide his soul to another body part and fuse it with that part and its energy. He was only able to guide his soul that way through imitating Kakas. Now after healing, he felt like it was easy to guide his soul through his body. It seemed like his control over his soul rose tremendously as well. He played around with his soul and started applying it on his limbs. He had no problem in using Kaka's fighting style on both of his arms or one leg for about five minutes without any repercussions. If he wanted to use both legs the time, he could sustain it would be halved. It was also more straining on his soul as he needed to force his soul to cover more area. He was rather satisfied with the result as it would mean that he could attack people that were close or even in the realms of gods. Of course, if he went up against someone like Beerus, he still would be annihilated. Well, that was his assumptions from what was shown in the series. As of how strong the gods of destruction here differ to what was shown, Broly had close to no idea. He didn't bother thinking about it too much as those powers were still far off. Broly went outside and saw a giant ship torn to pieces. Aaliyah casually leaned against the wall next to the gate. What happened? Broly asked her. Oh, just some pirates were trying to stir up some trouble, Aaliyah said while flying towards Broly with a smile on her face. I see. You finished them all? Yes, killed every single one of them. All right, how about we are going back? Broly said as he opened his palm offering his hand. She reached for it and before she could react a white blur shot out from Broly. Her eyes widened. She spat out some blood and looked down on the glowing arm that was penetrating her chest. Broly retracted his arm and pulled a red beating heart out in the process. What a joke! Broly said coolly as he crushed the heart. His hand was covered with blood as he looked at Aaliyah's figure which started to change slowly. She got smaller and her skin tone turned into a pale orange tone. Her brown scion tail split open and changed in size as they turned into orange fox's tails with the tip being a clean white. The woman grew whiskers and fox ears. Her face was pale white from the loss of blood and her chin was red from the blood she just spit out. She stared at Broly in disbelief. She couldn't understand how he was able to instantly know that she wasn't Aaliyah. She was an infamous assassin that could copy everyone's body and key signature to perfection. Even if the one she copied was far stronger than her, she wouldn't have a problem to use illusion to emulate the pressure one would normally feel, but now she in the first few seconds she met the target, she was seen through and had her heart crushed. Now she was just a heartless assassin at the verge of dying. After hearing about the death of Reap, she was heartbroken. The two of them were colleagues on about the same level that worked on a few missions together and could be considered friends. That was also why she immediately accepted the mission in hope of killing Broly. If she knew how powerful Broly was, she might have had a change of heart, but it was too late now. Broly didn't let her go and directly placed his hand on her forehead, absorbing her memories in a heartbeat. The surroundings had changed as well as that fox woman was dying. The giant ship disappeared and in its stead were four lights that entangled with each other. The fight between Aaliyah and three opponents now replaced the image of the giant ship. Although Aaliyah was in a numerical disadvantage, she had no trouble keeping up and even suppressing her opponents. The only reason she couldn't finish the fight was because of the abilities the opponents were using. One of them was constantly teleporting, attacking her from all kind of angles. One used completely undetectable attacks. Luckily those weren't strong enough to deal much damage. 
but it still forced Aaliyah to put a keep a barrier around her at all times. The last was growing vines from all over his body trying to wrap around Aaliyah. They were strong and durable which denied Aaliyah from eliminating it with a simple attack and had to focus more on dodging. It didn't seem like she would deal much damage if she took the efforts to destroy the vines. So she focused on the other two. After Broly finished absorbing her memories, he knew everything that he needed to know. He pulverized her body and headed towards the four figures. After they fought for this long, one of the assassins that was using undetectable attacks had its head blasted away, but Broly didn't see its life force leaving. Aaliyah and the other assassins had some battle injuries as well, but they weren't anything serious, however. The energy consumption of Aaliyah was enormous and she wouldn't be able to last as long as the others. Just as the headless body started moving towards Aaliyah again, it was pulverized by a green beam, which interrupted the battle between Aaliyah and the other two as well. Broly had already turned to his legendary state plus Sakari. After seeing Broly come towards them, they first thought it was Ko, the fox woman, but unfortunately for them it wasn't her. That's right. It is me, Broly. He could tell what was going on in their minds as he was flying towards them. After Broly had killed one of them, the other two wanted to escape immediately. The one with the body of vines quickly extended one to the teleporting assassin, wanting to teleport away with him. Of course, Broly wouldn't let them and dashed towards the one who could teleport and slapped him away, breaking almost every bone in that assassin's face. The other saw that and wanted to put as much distance between himself and Broly as possible, but Broly was faster. He grabbed one vine and pulled it hard. The main body was directly flung towards Broly. Seeing that he couldn't escape, he directed all his vines to attack Broly. Broly only scoffed and waved one of his hands sending a key sphere that expanded on impact with the vines, devouring every single vine near it. The sphere suddenly glowed strongly. No! The vine assassin screamed out until he was devoured by the key sphere's explosion. Broly headed to the unconscious teleporting assassin. He quickly read his mind before ripping him in two and pulverized his body. He killed them in seconds which left Aaliyah dazed. She only shook her head before she approached him and asked, How did they know we were here? Broly shook his head. They didn't. This is just one of the locations they put up a mission for to observe, but they seem to know that this crystal is somewhat important to us as they had sent more assassins to wait here. As of how they knew of its location, I have no clue. From what I got out of Ko's, the Fox Women's Memories, the Ice Planet, where the energy crystal is located on, is another location they put focus on. Not many have accepted the missions yet, as Reap was one of their strongest assassins. With the news of her, death, they will be even more apprehensive to accepting missions that target us. You were actually quite lucky that she needed to have had contact at least once with the person she wanted to turn into, otherwise she would have ambushed you instead. Doesn't matter now, let's just go back. In the next moment, the two teleported away and instantly arrived on Exausia. The moment they emerged, they noticed three lights in the sky bouncing at each other rapidly. Broly could see how Aze and Taro were fighting a figure with a cloak on. Not far away from that battle was another. Zongya and Kana were engaging what seemed like a black mech with two swords as arms, which wasn't something what one would call an assassin at all. Broly directly transformed and flew towards the cloaked figure. Broly had turned into legendary Akari state and chopped at the cloaked one's head. The figure was surprised and hadn't any time to turn around. He was directly sent into a building. Before Broly could follow up, however, he noticed distortion around him. Without hesitation, Broly powered up to ascended legendary Super Saiyan plus Akari. He quickly created a sphere around him, but nothing happened, and the distortion settled. Broly looked warily around and had his senses spread out. Suddenly, Chains broke through space and appeared in his sphere, tying him up immediately. The chains tried to pull him into a portal behind him, but with Broly's power, it didn't have enough strength to do so. Broly's key shot out of his body as a shockwave and directly destroyed the chains around him. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.